All right, and we are live. What is going down, everybody? We are going to be watching the price action for today. Hold on one second. Let me just get my screens in order. Get you out of here. Now, let's take a look. All right, so we are looking at uh, AMC. Let me go ahead and back out of Weeble real quick. We got AMC and GameStop are on the list of meme stocks to stare at today. We are really um, holding up pretty well for what we thought might happen today, especially considering the sell-off we had yesterday. But AMC and GameStop did hold strong, and they started the morning uh, not too bad. They are uh, going into a bit of a fade right now, but um, it looks like we are holding strong. We got a full... Uh, M right here. We it looks like a triple top almost. Oh, let's see. Let me just go ahead and look at some legacy trend lines on here. I think I erased everything on AMC just to get a fresh look. Let's just go ahead and switch this to a single. And let me get a few things backed out of my screen so I can see what's going on. Uh, I want to thank everybody that is watching today. I know there's not too many right now. I have a very small channel that just started, but I appreciate if you are here. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the chat and we will uh, look at them with everything we have. If we have to do any due diligence, we can do that right now. Not a problem. So what we're looking at right now is AMC. All right, extended hours. It looks like we started around here. Had a huge drop in the morning, like almost every single day, down to 1270. I uh, probably should have had some buys. I had some buys set for 1250, but they did not get hit. Um, ooh, and then we rode up, and it looks like we we rode up in a, in a nice healthy ride. Um, consolidation and a little bit of sell-off a little bit of profit taking coming down to the VWAP uh, bouncing up passing through VWAP and the 200 EMA multiple times and looks like VWAP was holding up over here between 950 and 1005 and then it broke and now we are uh, consolidating looks like we have a double top right here almost a triple let's go ahead and throw a trend line locally what is this oh this is a one second I don't want to do that I was leaving that up before just for uh, fun. Let me go ahead and switch that to the one minute since we are day trading today. And there's some of my legacy lines. I guess I don't have to draw any trend lines right now. Uh, we can work off of what we have already. Um, but look at that. 200 EMA is like a brick of support. They are just landing on it and holding. All right. So... Let's draw some lines on this just so we got a little uh, a few areas in the local uh, with the local price action to look at. All right. So let's see. What do I want to do here? I got a lot of options. I really don't want to pull any lines from pre-market because pre-market and after hours are their own beast. Um, let's see. What do I want to do? I love my trend lines. I love my triangles. I love my wedges. Um and we can see we have some legacy support, which I'm sure we'll be messing with today. We're at 1317 right now. I'm most likely going to increase my positions um, anywhere under 13. Uh, I'm sitting on six calls right now. I am getting into options up. Oh, we're doing a drop down to support. Hopefully we hold on this support right here. Oh, and we are breaking below it. But that's not a bad thing because I did look for some buys today. Now, I wish I didn't buy my options so early, but I was up um, a little while before uh, watching Trey. Love that dude. Really, really great um, stream. I decided I'd, I wanted to dip my toe into options actually yesterday. So I'm sitting on two June calls at a strike price in 19 to March um, 19th calls, which is our Friday, with a strike price of 14, much like Trey. Uh, and then I have, um, because of the God pill, which I saw on Andrew Mo, uh, I decided to grab two of those June $40 strikes, you know, just to dip my toes in it. So now they are all down pretty decently right now, but that's okay. That's the way it flows. Uh, maybe we'll average down on some. Um, but we'll see what happens right now. I'm sitting at, uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, I got those six call options and I have, 
1,200 shares of AMC. All right, so back to what we were talking about. It looks like we found a little bit of a fade, which is now recovering a small amount, but we'll see. The price action is weak. Our volume is going down. Our MACD is on its way to the floor. Uh, let's see. Mm, I don't even see the buy line. It's so light right there. All right, so what else do I want to do? Let's draw some lines. Let's draw some trend lines so we know what we have to get over. All right, forming a triangle here. Well, let me just get that nice and tight. We want to make sure that touches. All right, we got a lot of touch points right there. Validating that as a trend line. Way more than three, one, two, three, almost four, five, and then a bang down. And then we're breaking back up above this. Hopefully we can keep this as support. Let's see. Do I want to draw a bottom anywhere over here? Um, let's see. I can't see well enough. Let me go ahead and. All right. There's the, there it is right there. Maybe we'll go ahead and just do another one right there on the wicks. I like drawing my lines on the wicks. Some people like just to be on the candles and ignore the wicks. But that's not how I do it. But any way you like to do it, any way that works for you is good. Okay, so I got another up. Oh, this is sloppy. Don't want to be sloppy. All right, so... And the candle are coming up. The candles are coming up. They are coming up over this legacy support. They broke down for a second, but AMC just cannot be stopped. Somewhat of a falling wedge. Uh, would like it on a little bit of a steep, steeper angle, but let's see. We got one, two touches on the bottom and four touches on the top. Uh, we're now holding on this midline of this legacy support. Volume is picking up. Looks like we're having a turnaround on the MACD. Um, RSI a little bit weak and uh, close to the oversold area and I don't like this little turn right here we want this baby to keep going keep going have a little reset keep going a little reset keep going and just ride that to a billion I think is the new price target for AMC that'd be nice that'd be nice all right so that's AMC that's GameStop right here 214 hold it oh my god is that the same chart hold on let me just that looks, oh my, let me put these babies next to each other. That's, it looks like, I looked like we were diverging over the past um, week or so. Wait, did my mouse just die? I think my mouse just died, ladies and gentlemen. Did this, is this happening in real time? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I am on a laptop, so just to keep rolling with it, let me just switch that right there. Oh, man, I really need this mouse to work. So hold on for one second. I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute. What do I need? I need one AA battery. So hold on one second. That is uh, very unexpected. Hold on. All right, I think I found a double-A battery. Let me just go ahead and put that join in there. Boom. All right, all right. And we are, again, rocking and rolling. Yeah, look at these. This is... They don't look the same now. What do we got? Are we both on one minute? This is a one minute. All right, let me... I don't really like this. It ends up being too small of a chart. And then, But, yeah, I mean, on the one minute, AMC, GameStop. AMC, GameStop. I swear that's the same chart, although this one's going up while this one is coming back down. Now, we don't like being under the 200 EMA like this, and we don't like being under VWAP like this. Uh, we are, And we're, we're under the 9 as well, so 
We are we are in a downward uh, price action right now. Whoop! Well, what's this? Did something. What happened? Oh, it's just Ameritrade telling me that I should be watching something else besides myself. All right. So let's see what we have here. AMC looks like it's fading a little bit. Um, but we are in the oversold territory, so we are hoping that we can recover from here pretty easily. We have a nice level of support right here, and hopefully it holds true and we can bang back up. Um, like I said, we are under VWAP, which I have here in orange, and my 200 EMA is over here in red. And you could see right here my little local price action 9-day, I believe that's a 9-day MA, yep. I do switch up my stuff sometimes. Sometimes I'll use a 15 and a 50 as well. But right now we're just using the 9, the 200, and the VWAP. As well as RSI and what looks to be the CM Ultimate MACD multi time frame. Um, let me know if that's something you want. That's what it's called. Uh, you can find it pretty easily on uh, TradingView. It's free and it's a real nice looking little. Um, little indicator. It is lagging. It's MACD. Moving average convergence divergence. And I did have to change some colors to make it because they had it like blue and all that. And I was like, you're gonna confuse me. I'm trying to I'm trying to pay attention to green and red. All right, so that's AMC. Uh, let's just go ahead and look at these are my positions that I'm sitting in right now. Tesla's coming back. Tesla was scaring me a little bit this morning, but it's Tesla, so it is always coming back. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you go ahead and throw them in. Um, like I said, I was watching Trey before, and let me tell you, when there's a bunch of people asking you stuff, your streams roll no problem. But uh, if nobody's talking to me, then I'm just talking to myself, and then I'm just a crazy person. So uh, I don't want to be a crazy person, but this is what I would be doing anyway. I'd be sitting at these computer watching these screens. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily be talking. I'd probably be watching somebody else talk, but right now it's me doing the talking. So if you have any questions, please let me know. We will go ahead and talk about it. Uh, besides that, I'm basically, my goal for the day is to make some money on these AMC options and to grab more shares of AMC. Um, I had some account issues um, with um, Ameritrade, or I'm sorry, with Weeble. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, it is working right now, but it's been going on and off. It said I had to update, um, and I do not see my AMC. My AMC positions in Weeble should be, I mean, I had about uh, 550 shares, and it had showed that I did not have, hold on one second. It showed that I did not have that amount before, so I am not sure what's going on. Sometimes Weeble does glitch on me. Um, doesn't ever happen to Ameritrade. So, whereas Weeble does have a much prettier uh, interface, see like 68, this isn't right. So I got to figure that out. Um, uh, this should be about 550. I don't know what's going on with that, but that's okay for right now. Um, let's see, where's my position section? Oh, there's my watch lists. This is all everything we've been looking at. Anything anybody wants to talk about, we can always talk about it. Uh, but there's a lot of green in the market today. Let's go ahead and look at their uh, market screen. Oh, whoa, just kidding. I mean, my portfolio looks pretty good. I don't know what's going on over here. Uh, looks like we're having a big fade on the entire market. Let me go ahead and pull in my watch list. Uh, let's see trade flash Tesla crosses to green GME pre-market hits up 6% uh, Let's see. Let's see uh, Looks like we got a little bit of a shaky start had some good gains in the morning at least for the Nasdaq Dow just seems to be going down off the bat uh, S&P, it looks like it's in a consolidation pattern. Everybody's coming back a little bit right now, but we want to keep riding. Now, we are worried about uh, Jerome Powell talking today. It did not react well to the market last week. Um, but And then possible bond yields being increased. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I watched me, Kevin, last night. That dude is a genius. I love watching him. He has so much information. 
um, has taught me so much before I even started my YouTube journey. And uh, if you don't know who that is or you haven't watched him, I do recommend that you watch Meet Kevin. He is um, just a uh, an absolute wealth of information. So let's see what else we got here. So we're going to go back to AMC for a second. We're looking at this price action. I want to get... Um, that looks like somebody shortened Bitcoin for $4.3 million. All right. Um, so I am not looking to get into any other positions today. I'm looking to shave off anything that I don't need. And I want to go all in on GameStop and AMC, most likely more AMC. Uh, now I have been a little bit skeptical and I know people, cause I had said in my, my prior live streams that if you can't afford to hold GameStop or AMC through this and your mortgage is coming up or your kids need food or whatever it is to cut your losses or get your profits and do what you have to do. It's not right for everybody and it's not right to, to you know, down people because they're in a different financial situation than you are. So now, uh, that being said, I am going to try and ride AMC to the moon. Not as much GameStop because it's a little pricey for me at these levels and I only have about five as it sits. Um, so I am focusing on AMC. I have 650 in my account. I did have the other uh, 550 in my uh, Weeble account, but for some reason my Weeble account has re uh, reverted back to my last week positions in two of my positions, and I'm going to be talking to support about that today, uh, but I'm not worried about it. Everything always ends up the way it's supposed to be, um, mostly. So we'll see what happens with that. But right now, I'm going to be dealing with my Ameritrade account, sitting at 650 shares in Ameritrade. And like I said before, I got six call options, two for March 19th, strike price of 14, two for June uh, strike price of 19 and two for June strike price of 40. And that was off of the God pills recommendation off of Andrew Mo money's live stream from, I want to say two, three days ago. I'm not even sure. Um, probably two days ago. Cause that would be a trading day. All right. So let's see AMC making a comeback right now. Um, we are getting into the green MACD was telling us prior to this happening so we knew we did hit our oversold condition, came back to just around fair value. Let's take a look at GMC, uh, GMC real quick. Looks like GMC started that uh, recovery a little bit early, and now it's having a little bit of fade, but it's being held up by the 200 EMA. Um, pay attention to this if you want. This is, uh, Honestly, there's so many lines on a lot of my charts that sometimes I'll even forget when I drew them. Uh, this could be... I mean, this has to be a previous Fibonacci. Um, it looks like, yeah, this is too busy. It's really not a big deal. Let's just go ahead and get rid of some of this. I don't need all this. Um, I do want to keep my trend lines and my um, support and resistance lines, but we'll just get rid of the Fibonacci. It's not necessary right now, and those can always be redrawn later. Now, these are just some legacy supports and resistance. I know that they're different colors. Um, there was probably a reason for that at the time. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave those there just in case we take a huge dump uh, just so that we have some eyes on where we could be slowing down or bouncing back. Now, uh, let me take a look. No questions yet. Hopefully somebody's out there watching. If not, Sorry, that's fine. Siri, I didn't ask you nothing. You shut your damn mouth, woman. Okay. Let me just back up. All right. I didn't mean to get mean on Siri like that, uh, but sometimes she just yaps for no reason. All right. So all of my calls are kind of taking a dump. Not really looking great on that, but AMC is still holding strong in the low 13s. Um, let me back up for GameStop so we can see it better. Make sure this is on the one minute. I was on the one second before and didn't realize uh, that is what will happen if you mess around with trading view too much, but let me tell you, I just love it. I know people are all about Weeble and charting on Weeble, but I, I think trading view is worth every penny, every penny. And let me, let me just let you know on that black Friday sale. That's when you want to get your trading view account. If you do pay for trading view, they have the, a great black Friday, uh, discount. I think it's like 60%, something like that. Um, but yes. Okay. So. 
I know I'm competing with Trey right now and probably Andrew as well. Uh, two of the four Holdelman of the AMC uh, Money Apocalypse. I don't know. I made that Money Apocalypse part up. So I know that I'm going up against some stiff competition, but it would be great to get some people in here to talk about some stocks. Now, if that doesn't happen, that's fine as well. Um, honestly, I would like to be watching those guys right now. They are a wealth of information and very entertaining at the same time. Now, that being said, I am now jumping into the YouTube arena myself. So I would like uh, some people out there, if you are watching, please... Um, we don't have any super chats here. There doesn't have to be any money. Just go ahead and throw your questions out and we will go ahead and address them. I do have a good amount of trading experience myself. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but, uh, I'm sorry. And, uh, I would like to share that with you for free here today. Uh, as I trade, which I will be doing, that is where I, uh, I mean, I do work full time as well. So I work and I trade. I also mine Bitcoin. Um, I have several uh, altcoins staking, which are making money. So if you want to talk about passive income, we can get into that because I think in the end, that's really the best way is to get your money to work for you. Um, anything we could talk about. Shit. You, oh, didn't mean to curse. Want to talk about my personal life? I'll do that as well. All right, you could even see right here. I mean, this is a possibility that I had drawn that. I had put that there just because of that, just to note where that had fallen. But it can't be because the bar didn't even go to there. So this must be some legacy support. And I'm only calling it support right now because we were above it. If we were below it, it would be legacy resistance. If there's a line and you are under it, and it has shown to fall from that position before, that is your resistance. If there is a line and you are above it and you come down and bounce off of it, that is your support. Now, let's see. There is just so much to this, but it's really not that crazy, especially with this very, very simple setup. All I have is a moving average of a nine-day moving average. This shows me the local, I call it local, or... Um, short-term price action ema 200 which is universally used across crypto and in the stock market that gives you a, a long-term time frame a little bit over six months some people use 180 i like to use the 200 uh, and it gives you a little bit of a larger time frame point of view i would say macroscopic which i should be allowed to since i actually have science degrees uh, but I'm not going to steal that from Trey. Uh, I don't like repeating the stuff that he repeat that, that he says because that is his stuff. Uh, that's what made him who he is. And he has become a wild success in the past two months. And I don't want to step on his toes and use any of his uh, terms. I, I see a lot of people saying George W. And honestly, it gets me a little annoyed. I'm just like, get your own terms. Um, he started using it. He made it known. Uh, so I'm going to stay away from that. So I don't know. I'll figure out something and I'll, I'll, I'll make up my own little, uh, little slangs. Um, but up until then, I'll basically just use the technical terms, uh, until I can learn how to be as fun as Trey. And I'll tell you whatever he's taken in the morning. Uh, I hope he can, I can get in touch with him and he can tell me what it is. Uh, cause it's gotta be made of rocket fuel. I've never seen somebody with that much energy. Now that being said, he is 23 years old. I'm a little bit older than that. Um, but even at 23, God damn, I don't have whatever that dude, um, is, uh, I don't want to say, uh, I was going to say smoking for a second, but he's definitely not smoking nothing in the military, but whatever he's drinking, uh, I don't know if it's super coffee, but please, Trey, uh, send me an email and let me know what brand it is. Up, oh, falling wedge right here. Love that. This is a bullish formation. Uh, we usually go... Now, I don't like how long this is because this is going into... What is this? Um, 13 is about 130. Uh, don't like that. 1333. Somewhere around here, normally you'll see a breakout. I'd like to see a breakout right here and then breakout right there. And then keep going and keep going. Now, there was lines here before, but I erased them. Because um, the Fibonacci and, you know, I like to keep my trend lines to extend on forever. Because they just, they're always something that is respected. Um, 
in the future. So I like to keep my trend lines going on forever. Um, I like my support and resistances, but eventually you do have to clean up your charts or else it just looks like a big mess. Probably like, oh, like this looked like before I erased a bunch of that stuff. Now there is a bunch of trend lines everywhere, but like I said, those trend lines are valuable and you will not mind them being anywhere, uh, everywhere later when the price action is following it to a T. And I'll tell you, uh, let's see. So I did put these on recently, but you know, a bunch of these were drawn back back in the day. Look at this. There's no way these were drawn uh, on this day, and yet it rode this support, broke it, came down, got resisted for a minute, broke down. It was resistance, came back up, came down for support, rode it up. It kind of resisted a little bit above where it should, but you still saw resistance, came back down, saw resistance, came up, saw support, and so on and so forth. And that's why I like to keep my lines going on forever, because for some reason, uh, they just matter. Look at this. Look at that. It didn't even wick down. It literally stopped on who knows how long ago that was drawn, but just stopped right on it. So that just shows why these are valuable. These I just drew, so there's no magic here. Uh, but, you know, down the line, hopefully the ones that go down we never have to go back to. Looks like I missed a Fibonacci somewhere, but it's so far back down, I'm not even going to worry about it. Because we're going to stay on a local one minute. Um, I want to do some day trade buying today. And so what I'm going to be looking for, just to give you an example, um, when I am buying is I'm going to be looking for a MACD, super, super, super low in the red. I want to be on the bright side of the red because the darker red is indicative of us coming back uh, to the green territory with positive um, volume, uh, more buys than sells. And I don't want to see a little green cross right there. Or maybe right before, and that's when I want to buy because I know we're coming up now. Things like this could happen, and you could get tricked and be like, "Oh, it's it, it's going, it's going," and then bam, your green turns around on your on your buys, and then we just slam back down. So we're hoping to not see that. Let me just midline this a little bit so it looks better. Um, I'll tell you, the I'm gonna have to get just a giant screen because even on a 32 inch. Uh, this isn't doing it for me. I have a 50 inch over there, but it's uh, a little bit newer. My computer is a little bit older. Um, I don't think I have. Uh, you know what my issue was? I needed another HDMI cable and uh, all 17 that we have are being used right now. So I'll have to order another one from Amazon, which I'm not going to mention again uh, unless I start some Amazon affiliate links because that seems to be what everybody does. So I want to do that too because they know what they're doing. And when I say everybody, I just mean, you know, the professionals that I've followed um, and probably people that you have seen in the past as well. Now, let's see. Um, so this is AMC right now. Looks like we are having a small area of consolidation. Kind of rough to tell what's consolidating or not on a one minute time frame, but let's bang this back to a 15. So now you can see makes a little bit more sense when you see this trend line. We have not broken it yet, um, but this wedge uh, should be bullish. This should be bullish. We should be breaking out of this. This is what I am hoping. Uh, and you could just see how all of your indicators change depending on your time frame. So you really want to make sure to um, know the differences when you're switching time frames um, based on your indicators. You want to make sure that the higher the time frame, honestly, the more uh, indicative it is to follow what your indicators are saying because it's had more time to gather information. Now, if you're on a one minute, um, it's great for day trading because it's it's a lot quicker. It's telling you what's happening at the moment. Uh, but for a long term directional uh, hypothesis, it is not as valuable, at least in my opinion. And I do want to say, uh, once again, I know that there's probably nobody watching. Looks like there's two right now. Thank you for watching. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. Nothing I say is financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. And I just want to go on the trading journey. And I want you to come on it with me. Um, 
I promise to do all I can to be as, as entertaining as possible, to give you the due diligence that you need to answer your questions with no super chats needed, uh, partly because I'm not monetized. Uh, nope, that's all of it. If I had the option, I'd probably put it out there. So yeah, we don't have that yet. Just go ahead and ask your questions if you have any. Uh, if you got anything to say, if you got anything you want to talk about, even if it's not stock related, I don't even care. Consider this a radio show right now. I just want to yap about stuff. So there's only so much I could say about AM see on a one minute i can't be like okay we're at 13 14 point two or a 13 14 point three that's just not i don't know that would just be boring i can go back and forth and look at tickers all day uh but if you're not throwing any questions at me then i won't have anything to answer now there are a few things we can look at in the meantime that aren't necessarily just the charts um let's see so i got this really cool app um, it's both an app and a website, um, and they charge you separately. And I don't know if I've spoken about it before, if you've watched any of my live streams, but I absolutely hate that. That being said, um, the app is really valuable when, um, I can't be able to look at my phone all the time. It tells me what's running, what's not. Um, it is just absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, it has a discovery mode, which you can change to check for high volumes, high floats. Who's got the momentum? Who's got an unusual volume? That's your U volume or, you know, high volatility, implied volatility is high. I don't know how many percentage that is. This has been happening a little bit. I guess I'll wait. Um, these are the popular tickers that people are searching at the moment. Alert history is telling you with halts and resumes. Uh, there are meters and quotes, which is another thing. And then the stream is going to be telling you on this side what's running up and on this side what's running down. All right, so right here. And now you can see that. So here's one, J-W-E-L, -E, J -W -E -L, I believe I'm reading that correct, was halted for volatility 5% in one minute three minutes ago. So when that resumes, we will see it resume. Now this, okay. Um, uh, we are just having some issues right now. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with my internet when I stream, because for whatever reason, um, I don't know if my rig is fighting against my, uh, computer for, um, bandwidth. Uh, I did do a couple tests on it. I talked to my ISP about it. They said it isn't an issue. Um, I have dropped the output power on my rig down to, God, less than 700 watts. Um, so it really shouldn't be doing that much. I only got six GPUs on it. Uh, and it says, according to my XFi app, that I'm taking very, very little bandwidth for it. So we should be streaming hot and healthy now. Uh, like I was saying before, anybody that's watching, please ask me a question. I would love to talk to you. Now, this is FinViz. This is, uh, I'm, I'm going to go through right now some of my resources, the things that I look at. Now, this is really, now, this is FinViz Elite. I paid for this uh, for a couple months, but I did cancel it. I think it ends, I don't know, sometime in April, sometimes next month, uh, which isn't a big deal. They, they really don't add a lot, to tell you the truth for what you get for free. So when you get stuff for free um, through Finviz, I mean, you have most of this here. Like, I don't remember it right now, specifically what's not there. Maybe if I uh, log out. Um, but, uh, I mean, you have most of this on, on your free Finviz. So I, I really don't see the point of paying for it. Um, I think it's what, like, let's see. I don't care. That's, that's my old thing. Um... So yeah, it closes on the 12th because I canceled it. What is it? Where Where's your costs? I haven't used this back test thing. I haven't really done any of this. Um, I work so much that I've been just kind of trying to do my DD, not really going that far in, but I, I will eventually get to these things. And maybe I'll even pay for a few more months just to really go through um, everything that this offers because it might be something that um, in the long run you really like. Now... There's another one. I want to grab it real quick. What was it called? I think a stock rover. Stock rover. Now, there's. I'm just coming up with all these amazing resources. Now, the only problem with resources is that they cost resources. And those resources I'm talking about is money. Um, so, yeah, they cost money, and that's just what it is. So if you want to trade, the more stuff that you use, the more that you will pay. But if you're making money, then it's worth every 
Penne. So um, I just want to show you this real quick. This is another one. This is called Stock Rover. Uh, this gives you just, I mean, a cornucopia of information. Um, I don't want to look at, let's see what quotes we have in here. So the, I was doing a video on Iro. Um, I ended up doing it until like two in the morning. Uh, it didn't come out right. I had to go to work uh, at five and wake up at four thirty. Um, so I just ended up scrapping it for now. But let's see if we can go ahead. I haven't really used this too much, but the amount of I think I have a yeah I have a premium trial on this right now. It says it's for fourteen days. I don't know how much longer it is. It's a little expensive, but if it proves to be valuable down the line, I will pay for it um portfolios so it looks like i got my portfolios in there i really just kind of want to see amc and gme right now so let's see how we do that so let's put amc amc entertainment and gme uh game stop and we'll just add those you know what while we're here why not tesla has been a favorite of mine for right now um not really loving a lot of my other plays don't really care much about them um those are the three i care about the most right now so let's go ahead and done there and let's see value score Ooh, 60 on gamestop higher than tesla and amc interesting i have to look into how they decide why that's what that value is hmm that is very interesting. But like, look at all of the information that Stock Rover gives you. I mean, this is basically like Finviz, Atom, um, Walmart. Well, Walmart's a whole different thing. Walmart's pretty awesome because that has some Trader View, Trader Sync portfolio um, options in it. Like, it'll tell you, like, show you on a chart where you bought and sold. And I'm very visual, so I really, really like that. But yeah, I mean that I'm gonna end up doing some videos on that. I'll tell you, it's it's time. The time to make these videos and like the learning curve, because I had just started this a week or two ago, didn't really plan on doing it. Um, the learning curve's been a little bit um, harder than I thought it might be, um, and that's because I'm just not putting the time into it that I have to, because I'm just spread in so many different directions. But like I said, this is my passion. I actually went to, you know, outside of going to um, getting a few degrees, I did go to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and that's what I wanted to do originally was be a radio broadcaster, talk on the mic very much like the mic I am talking on right now. And then if I could incorporate that into trading and do both at the same time while making money at it, I just feel like that is a win-win for me and hopefully a win-win for people watching and getting some entertainment or information or both uh, from what I am doing. So, and like it says on the screen, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Um, let's see. So I want to go to AMC real quick. Now, AMC, you have your, let's see, dividend adjusted price. I do not believe that AMC gives dividends at the moment. You have your volume. Uh, looks like your time frames are over here. Uh, remove move, moving average. We've got some RSI. Uh, the simple moving average 50. What is this? RSI 14 day and your volume. So these are all very important and I'm sure there's more options here. I got to be honest. I only looked at this about one or two times attached my portfolio. So then I haven't really checked it out. Uh, let's see what's over at the um, on the side over here. So here's our current price, which I believe is correct. Um, it's not that correct, but it's correct enough for now. Uh, so it's saying as of 1117, which was one minute ago, this is the price. Uh, you have your one, five, one month, three day, one year, five year. Uh, let's see. You got your sector, industry, market cap, your float, uh, employees. I like that. This is just a wealth of information. Value score, growth score, quality score, sentiment score. Sentiment, obviously, I bet sentiment should be a little bit higher than that. Oh, I did just get an alert that AACG is up 5.2% on the day. AACG. So if you are in AACG, take an, uh, keep an eye on it because it is rolling up right now. Um, oh, it had a nice, uh, wow, huge candle, huge one-minute candle from 440 to 449, and then it's just kind of stalled out. 
Hopefully that keeps rolling because I believe my, let's see, my cost average is 612 on that. Um, that was another momentum play that I jumped in without doing my DD. And let me tell you right now, do not jump in on momentum plays without doing DD. And unless you are like hyper fast, I don't know. Uh, out of 10 momentum plays that I've jumped in, I've held bags on like eight of them. Now, a few of them kept going and I was able to get in and out with a quick day trade. But um, if you just watch that thing riding up and there's no pullback before you buy, um, uh, honestly, my advice, not financial advice, but what I would do uh, in that situation is wait until things settle down and not go in right away because that's the mistake I'd made in the past. And now I am literally sitting on one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, six bags over a month period of time that I'm still holding on to because I refuse to cut them for a loss. Um, I did get out of the other three, thank goodness. Uh, and we'll see what happens. If I end up needing the money or something like that, which hopefully I will not, then maybe we'll get rid of them. Uh, but for now, I am holding those bags and averaging down until I can get out with a good profit. Um, let's see. So my calls are doing just horrendously right now. Um, I'm wondering if I should average down on any of my calls. I'll tell you the truth. I kind of want to. Now, the March 19th, um, that's two days away. I was hoping to get in and out of that. I went, paid way too much for it. Um, and that's what happened. See, I was watching Trey. I, I mirrored what he did. I don't know why I know better. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with Trey. Trey knows what, he knows what he's doing, but I should have been like, mm, let me see what happens with the price. Uh, cause it has gone down. I bought two contracts at 88 cents. So it was $88 a piece. Very cheap. Uh, and now they are 68 cents down. So I'm $40 down almost instantly. And that's not a lot of money, but I don't want to lose any. I don't want to lose a penny. So anyway, back to Stock Rover. This is totally an awesome um, uh, resource. It just has so much. I've, I, you know, I've seen very few things with, with this amount of um, resources all in one place. I did try that Ortex site that Trey uses. I don't know. It, it was it was cool, but I, I didn't like it that much, so I just kind of canceled that. I feel like this, um, it doesn't look as cool as the other one. The other one's kind of like, and they say that they, they kind of like sell themselves as like an alternative to a Bloomberg terminal. I don't know about all that, but this seems like it's got a lot, a lot of information all right there. Like I don't even need to click on nothing to find it. I just scroll down and it's just... Just a wealth of information, sales growth, EPS, EBITDA, and that's, let's see if I can remember that. Earnings before, interest, taxes, uh, depreciation, and amortization. And if you're wondering, because uh, I was wondering about that myself, amortization is just spreading the payments for some sort of asset or debt or any type of payment over a period of time. So that is what amortization is. So that is your EBITDA. That is a very important number. You will hear it a lot down the line, especially if you are in the markets. Okay, so uh, let's see. There's really, I mean, these are meme stocks. So honestly, all this is out the window at this point. We are basically riding on the strength and conviction of the um, of the apes of Wall Street bets, of which I am one. If you didn't hear that, that was me pounding on my chest, probably a little corny. Hopefully uh, my girlfriend heard that and will come out and smack me for being a dork. Um, all right, so let's keep moving. Um, here's tip ranks. I love tip ranks. Now, it's not, uh, Does I got to be honest, Stock Rover, mm, really awesome. Uh, just throwing that out there while I look at tip ranks. But tip ranks is pretty, pretty cool. C I I G merger C I I C. I don't even remember what this is, but it must have been on a watch list from maybe a month ago. Uh, Churchill Capital going down by five percent. C C I V. Uh, those Lucid cars look really cool, but over a hundred grand, mm, I don't know. I'd go with Tesla at that point. But there was a lot of hype around the stock. Um, I did put a friend in it in the twenties. He sold at sixty like a boss, and then it just went down and down and down. Um, charge point, I believe used to be SBE lemonade. I never got into. I felt like it was too expensive. Neo. I gotta be honest. I'm not, I know Neo itself 
is kick ass and everybody is about it. But the more and more I mess with Chinese companies, the more and more I get burned, the more and more my friends get burned. Um, I don't know. And, you know, I've said it before. If you if you haven't seen it yet, look up the China hustle. I know it's on Hulu right now. Just watch how they do business. Just 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 watch that thing. Um, and not that we, I mean, look at the financial crisis and I'll tell you the truth. I watched the big short last night. You know, we have our own group of scumbags here. Uh, they have theirs as well. So just be careful. Um, you never know what, what, what they're going to do when it comes to manipulating the market, when they have all that money and all that power. So we are holding just back to AMC real quick. We're holding nicely above this support at 1314, depending on where you look. This is a past trend line which uh yes this is a legacy trend line drawn it has to be last week because i haven't really messed with this i've been working constantly since friday um so i haven't really messed with this too much until then uh let's see i really wish I, i'm gonna take some more classes on elliott wave because I, I i mean i would i i know a little bit you know about it um but I don't really want to mess with it on video until I'm 100% on what I'm doing. Um, but we will get to that at some point. But Elliott Wave, if you want to know another way to chart, uh, it's not always 100%, but it does seem pretty good. Now, Elliott Wave in tandem with your Fibonacci retracements is a really, really powerful tool. And it just gives you, uh, I would say that it gives you a great hypothesis for where the stock might go, where it might stop. Um, there's just so many rules for me. I got to be honest. When I first looked at it, I'm like, this is perfect for an algorithm because an algorithm, because if this hits there, then there's an 87% chance that it'll hit there and da, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, I'm sure there's a service out there that it does it for you. And honestly, I would rather do that because I feel like my time is more valuable than money. So I mean, it depends on how much money, but for the amount of time it would take for me to master Elliott Wave, which I feel would be a good amount of time, I'd rather pay for a service that I just throw the ticker in there and it just shows me a quick percentages on what the, um, you know, probabilities are for a stock to go one way or the other, or, you know, crypto as it were, if that's something that you'll be doing at the same time. I'm very heavily in crypto myself. I didn't do much of it last year, except for selling two Bitcoins at way too low a price. Um, but I didn't get my taxes back. I still haven't gotten my taxes back from last year. I was afraid that because of the crypto thing, I talked to my accountant. They said out of thousands of people, I was literally the only person to report my crypto, which I was like, I guess I'm dumb. Um, but I felt like reporting your taxes is something you should do. I don't know. I guess maybe some people don't do that when it comes to that. But, you know, at that point, I had felt that I'd wanted to CYA and cover my butt. Um, CYA is cover your you know what. Um, so I, I wanted to do that. And honestly, it has done nothing but screw me. So it just goes to show you that when you do the right thing, sometimes, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. So reporting crypto on your taxes, um, might make you not get your taxes back for, we are now on, it'll be, a, a year next month that I have not received my taxes. I have not received a single stimulus check, although I definitely, uh, according, you know, from my job was in the area of receiving one, no 1200, no 600. And hmm, we'll see what happens if I get a 1400. I doubt that'll happen as well. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, uh, but I'm hoping y'all are getting your stimulus checks and I hope that you are throwing that baby into the market. I'm seeing an opportunity to draw another trend line. So I'm going to, because I freaking love trend lines. I love them. I love seeing them. I love watching them. And I love watching the uh, bars just obey them as if they are giving them um, directions. I just love it. So we had we drawn that one right there. It looks like we are right above this trend line right here. We want to hold above this, get over here, break through this resistance, and then keep it as support as we ride our way up. That would be a best case scenario. Now I'm just looking down at my phone real quick. I have Ameritrade over, uh, I'm sorry, Thinkorswim over on my right screen, but I don't like turning my head because my um, screen that I am doing my YouTube on and then my other screen that I am looking that shows me my 
health of the stream and all that other stuff uh, is in front of me. So I like to just look down on my phone. And let me tell you, um, Trey, um, I shouldn't have bought those two options that you bought. That I mean, that's on me. That's on me, but uh, I know you bought a whole bunch of them, so I'm just doing the math, and you are down a good amount of money because if I'm only down 50 bucks on two and you have, what, 35? Um, yeah, math that out. So I don't know. We definitely got, got in a little bit early. I was dumb and, you know, went along and just blindly bought what a YouTuber was buying, which I, I even say on this that I don't ever recommend. But I do trust him that much that maybe it will come back. If it doesn't, then I paid, let's see, what was it? 88, so it'd be 160, 176. 176 is how much I will most likely uh, hand to the um, uh, brokerage over at Ameritrade. I'm going to divide that by two. Yep, just making sure 176. So hopefully that 176 was just burnt, wasn't burnt, and we can actually get out of that with some money. That'd be sweet. Uh, if not, that's just what happens. If you're in the market, be prepared to lose because you never know what's going to happen. Um, let me just go ahead and look. I do see that there's two concurrent viewers, um, but I don't see anybody in the participants area. If you are watching, please throw a like or a hello in the chat. Uh, or anything uh, if you don't want to like it or click the bell don't like it or click the bell but just say hi in the chat just maybe you could do that for me that's all I'm asking for just anybody to talk to because at the end of the day um, I don't want to be talking to myself like a crazy person I would like to get some uh, interactions going I would love that now I know it takes some time when you start your channel to get people watching but anybody hopefully Mo. Mo was actually my number one fan. I know I haven't streamed in a minute, so maybe he hasn't um, been looking for it. But hopefully we can get Mo here. Mo likes to talk. Uh, but anybody else that does come across this stream, please go ahead and throw your questions out. I don't want to get bored and throw on a Be Right Back screen, which is what I'm already starting to do. I'm getting bored of looking at the same stuff. Um, let's see. So there's FinViz. I can go through all that. This is really great. Um, let's just go to the screener section real quick since, um, let's see, AMC and GME are just kind of holding right now. Um, my call options are complete dog crap. So that was a bad move. Don't listen to other people. Only listen to yourself. Um, I didn't get into calls until yesterday and today and, um, I'm just down right now. And, you know, you gotta, you're going to be down sometimes. I'm not going to freak out and sell it or whatever, but I don't like looking at red. It just it irritates the hell out of me looking at red. Um, that's why I always like to average uh, down on anything that's red and then get the hell out of it as soon as I can because I do not being in losing positions. Oh, here's another one that I jumped in yesterday, SFET. Um, I don't know what they do. I don't even remember. They had some great news. I think they did something about biometric-based solutions online. Um, yeah, honestly, let me lose my money and just avoid that garbage uh, as quick as you can. Uh, not financial advice, but it's just it, it ran up and then it came back down to lower than where it started. And now it's just sitting there and, you know... I don't really see signs of manipulation. I don't know if maybe it's being shorted. It's possible. Um, but, you know, if I get into something and I'm getting wrecked on it, the last thing I'm going to do is tell you or, you know, mention that maybe you should get in on it because that would just be irresponsible and mean. So what I'm showing you right here is one of my presets I have for FinViz. Uh, since, you know, we don't have anything else going on right now. So these are just some small things that will show you something that might pop in the near future, let's see here. Do I own any of these? I do not, but that's okay. Um, so you can see price under $10 uh, so that there is huge growth potential with a small amount of investment. I do like that. I don't like going into the penny range, although I will sometimes. Um, but you want to, um, and, and if you, it really depends on who you are. If you have a whole bunch of money, then a, a $10 stock to me then is a $1,000 stock to you. Then you got to do you. But for me, the low cap pop consists of a price under $10, a relative volume of over $2 million, shares outstanding of under $10 million. That means that we can pop like that. And then a float. Under 10 million, which means the shares available to buy are under 10 million, and you have a very, very, very good chance of squeezing that stock. 
So here are the top 14 in the low cap pop. Let's see what these other resets I have. Um, I'm not really even sure what these are. Let's see. Pop 10 FI. Let's see what that is. So, okay. So short, um, less than 20% on the float. Volatility is over 3% on the week. Uh, same as I had here before. Float's not a big deal over here because I got my float short. Um, and price is under $10. So it's basically the same. Uh, let's see. Descriptive and technical. All five. Yeah, so that's that's got everything in there. Doesn't look like anything meets that criteria. Hold on. I can continuously get in uh, notifications. Um, uh, nothing good. Nothing good. Um, I will read out those notifications that matter as we go. And I am uh, going to have to go ahead and pull this over here. Oh, here we go. Are you buying stocks? So we have Kyle asking, are you buying stocks with your stimulus? Uh, Kyle, um, I haven't gotten any stimulus yet. I didn't get any stimulus last year. I haven't even gotten my, my taxes haven't even been re returned to me yet from last year. Uh, but if I do receive a stimulus, then yes, I will be putting my stimulus into the market along with the other money that I have. Uh, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but um, the greatest way that I've discovered for building wealth quickly and efficiently with the least amount of setup is through the stock market and through crypto. Regular jobs and all, you know, um, training and going to school. I mean, that sets you up to be... Um, in a good position in life, but for life-changing wealth, I feel that the market itself is the best bet for you. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but that is what I think. Now, let me just go ahead and see. Oh, Kyle's still here. Uh, so yes, so I will be buying stocks if I do get the stimulus, but you got to realize I didn't get my refund from last year. Don't know what's happening. I talked to the IRS actually a month or two ago and they were like, oh yeah, there's 7 million other people that haven't gotten nothing. I was like, thanks. Um, so no, no 1200, no 600, no refund. And I don't think if I haven't gotten those yet, then I don't think I'm going to get that 14 anytime soon. But I do think that everyone getting a stimulus check that doesn't have any immediate needs that they need to fill with money should most likely, in my opinion, perhaps, um, learn to, uh, use the stock market to their advantage and perhaps use that money to buy some stocks. So that is my answer on that. Um, thank you for your question, Kyle. I very much appreciate anybody that comes in and I appreciate you, Kyle. If you have any other questions, you just go ahead and throw them in the chat and we will go to them. If you want to look in on these stocks, if you have any questions about AMC or GameStop, I will go ahead and do that. Crap, if you want to talk about what I ate yesterday, I will do that with you. And let me just go ahead and turn to the side for a second because I have a big thing of biscuits and gravy uh, that my girlfriend made for me. And I have just been ignoring it while I've been yap, yap, yapping along. Let me just take a bite. Mmm, it's cold, but it's okay. That's what happens when you don't eat your food right away. Mmm, all right. So, let's see. Any other questions in the chat? Um, we have a few things we can go over. We can look at price action. Ooh, AMC rocking and rolling. Break out of there, baby. We are above that uh, support right there. We want to stay above this and just keep rolling. We want to break through this volume weighted average price and just bang through it. Maybe even ride it up. Why not? Let's see what's happening with GameStop. GameStop showing some strength too. Woo, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Um, I want to jump right down now when you look at this don't think that I, I do not short stocks uh, This is just a bunch of the ETFs. I wrote down from Charlie at zip trader uh, So if you're wondering why I have a short the market you go blame Charlie about that, but I do not do shorts They are just ETFs that follow the market uh, that when the market is up they go down when the market is down they go up so That's what those are, but I am gonna go to watch list which is kind of an end-all, be-all of crypto, the markets, the stocks. Um, it doesn't have everything, but like here's XBT, which is what they call it on Kraken, which is what I use to trade Bitcoin, which I haven't done in a minute because, like I said, 
they never gave me my taxes back. So I still don't know how they're going to react to me reporting my crypto. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, HCMC is a play that I actually got from Trey's Trades. Um, they're the ones that are in a lawsuit with Philip Morris. I got to be honest, they have been barcoding since day one. Um, I got in way, way too heavy. I wanted to get it in the 0.2 mark or 0.002. It ran way the hell up. I bought at pretty close to the top because, I mean, all the indications showed that we were going to keep running, and then it just took a dump from there. I've averaged down. I started with 100,000 shares. Let me just tell you, uh, just to give you an example of how many times I've averaged down, I now have 1.2 million shares of HCMC. So if it if they lose that, um, I mean, that money's gone. That's probably close to 5,000 because I got in too high, and that just shows why you always have to uh, wait for your spots and pick them. Now, you can get tricked. I got tricked by the price action. Um, you know, not by where I heard about it or, and, and ne never blame anybody for your investment decisions. If you hear somebody saying something and you do it, that's on you. Um, just like it's on me when I made those, uh, call option buys this morning while watching Trey. Um, that's my, you know, I wanted to do it. I wanted to try it and it's not a big deal. You know, you just have to make sure that you are prepared to possibly lose all the money that you're investing in that. That's not what our aim is in the stock market, but it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. So I'm not going to do a whole, you know, a whole video on HCMC right now, but the long and short of it is they have a patent on a, I forgot the specifics of it. I believe it was the, um, they had, th theirs is called the iCup and then Philip Morris has something called the IQOS. Hold on. Let me just. HCMC suing Philip Morris. Okay, back in November 2020, Healthier Choices, which is HCMC, their Healthier Choices management company, uh, filed a patent infringement lawsuit against Philip Morris. At the heart of the lawsuit are allegations by Healthier Choices that the IQOS product from Philip Morris, Morris violates its patent for an electronic pipe. So let's take a look at Reddit. I am just loving Reddit lately. I'll tell you, I, I loved it about, you know, I, I've been on it for a while, but mostly for crypto. It really, the stocks, I only really got into the stock part of it uh, around the, the, you know, the January meme stock area. Um, let's see any other questions. I don't have any other questions. Kyle, if you're still here, if you have any other questions, you just go ahead and throw them out there, bro. And we will go ahead and get to them. So. Let me just read this a little bit before I start reading it out loud to you. Okay. Okay, so HCMC lawsuit. This is from two months ago, which is probably about when I got into the stock because I've been sitting on that dog for a minute. Um, that's something that you're going to hold on to for a while because they're probably going to kick the can down the road at least a few more times. Um, but if HCMC does win that, I mean, that is going to be... Whew, that is going to be real, real nice, real, real nice for the stockholders. All right. So this looks like some DD. Um, let me just take a real quick look. Make sure it's not. Uh, we got the haters. Yeah, shut up. Um, how you feeling? Da, 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 da. All right. It's really just a lot of opinions. And this is an opinion too, but it looks like he has some due diligence and some actual uh, parts of the patent infringement. So I'm going to read this. So uh, been doing some research and here's the gist of the lawsuit. Basically, HCMC is suing Philip Morris for patent infringement on, as they call it, the 170 patent, which refers to the patent HCMC has on electronic pipes, delivery systems, heating coils, eat, uh, etc. Allegedly, Philip Morris uses their 170 technology on the IQOS product in some way, shape, and form. Now, I know that they did um, like $8 billion from that thing last year. So I just got an alert, um, and then I clicked on it. Hold on one second. Palantir shares are trading lower. Weakness has been attributed to Tuesday comments from CEO Alex Sharp on CNBC criticizing Wall Street's short-term focus and said there are plenty of other things to invest in for short-term investors. Wow, you said that about your own company, Palantir? Oof, I'd sell that just because that guy sounds like an idiot. 
That's just stupid. Oh, there's other stocks that, what are you, stupid? That's your company. I'd be like, short term, mid term, long term, buy us. Oh, man, I'd fire that dude in a second. I don't know what he's done or how good he is, but just off of that statement, I would, oh, man, I hope the board of directors is looking heavily at that dude leaving because that is just stupid. Yeah, Palantir's trading lower because the, what did he say? The CEO said there's other things to invest in short term. What are you, uh, what are you, slow? I mean, come on, man. All right, anyway. Let's back up and start reading this HCMC lawsuit again because this is a, a stock that I really am really hoping does something for me because um, I don't want to lose my five thousand dollars. I might, I might lose it. I mean, we're about half. I think my my cost average is like way up in the stratosphere. It's like, God, I can't even see it. It's like it's at the moon already. Is where I bought it. Like right there. I started out there, and then I had to buy. A couple thousand dollars until I got right there. So that's where I'm sitting. And we're sitting over here barcoding with these algorithms like a mofo. I mean, that's just not natural. Now, a lot of people say barcoding is good in certain circumstances. And it's true. I mean, people can be buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. But... I tend to think that these types of barcodes that are consistently going on for a month now are algorithmic trading done by some sort of firm or institution. So uh, did I want to finish this or did I want to be ADD about it? Yeah, I'm going to finish it real quick. So let's see. So now the more interesting piece of what I found is what HCMC is looking for in their judgment. I took this from their legal submission to the Georgia courts. Take a look. Wherefore, Healthier Choices respectfully requests the court to enter judgment in its favor and grant the following relief. I like that, the way that they said that. The following relief. Relieve us. Um, all right, so I'm going to just highlight these so it's a little bit easier for me to read. And okay, so. Let me just lower this. Entry of judgment under 35 USC 271A. I don't know what that is. That defendants and the manufacturer importation offer for sale, sale and or use of defendants IQOS product have infringed at least one claim of the 170 patent. Uh, you know, what? and before I read the rest of that, I just want you all to know that at some point soon, if this keeps going on and the um, the what do you call it? The suit is still rolling on. They can request that Philip Morris, uh, for the time being until the lawsuit is over, not sell the IQ OS. And I'm pretty sure, uh, I hate being AD, ADHD and going to other places when I'm reading something, but I'm pretty sure. Um, let's see, uh, PM IQ OS, sales breakdown. I just want to show you, uh, there has to be, I'm just going to find an image. Um, no, this isn't what I was looking for. Oh, okay. Let's see. Nope. Don't know what that is. Don't care. Let me back out. I need something just to just to show you what the percentage of their sales are, because I believe that it's their highest selling product more than cigarettes. And it was like eight billion last year. Um, I cannot find. Who is this dude? Um, I don't know who that dude is. OK, I don't see what I'm looking for here. Oh, let me try it another way. Let me take that off. Philip Morris, IQOS sales. Let's just do that. Oh, there's only one L in Philip. Yes, we know. Investors press release. Still hot to spot a cigarette sales drop. Are you going to show me the breakdown of how much money they're making? This is literally what I clicked on before. I'm so stupid. Okay. Um, if it's not in here, I'm just going to back out of it because whatever. Um, but honestly, I've seen it before. It's their biggest seller and it was something along the lines of $8 billion. Are you going to work? Or are you going to take forever? Okay. Da, 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 da. There was this really good, there was a really good graphic of their sales. 
Oh, God. Let's try it again. Philip Morris. Let's see. Sales by product. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, you know what? Three, three tries and I'm done on that. Okay. So, but yeah, let me just tell you right now, it's their biggest sellers, selling product. They made 8 billion. So if I own the patent on something they were using for that, I would number one, stop them from selling it unless they gave me money off the bat or completely, um, just gave in to the, um, to the, you know, the allegations, um, or I would, um, basically, yeah, that, that, nope, that's exactly what I would do. I would go ahead and put in a stop order on a stop order, a, uh, injunction on them selling any more of those products until it's over. Um, all right. So next entry of judgment under 35 USC 271 B that defendants manufacture importation offer for sale, sale and or use of defendants IQS product actives actively induces and or con Tributes to the infringement of at least one claim of the 170 patent. C. Ordering defendants to account and pay damages adequate to compensate plaintiff for defendant's infringement of the 170 patent, including pre-judgment and post-judgment interest and costs, and supplement damage for any continuing post-verdict or post-judgment infringement. D. Ordering and accounting for any infringing sales not presented at trial and an award by the court of additional damages for any such infringing sales. It pretty much just says, pay us, pay us, pay us. Awarding healthier choices, its costs and expenses incurred in this action, pay us. So it's also saying that they don't want them to pay for their uh, law legal fees. Granting healthier choices, such other and further equitable equitable relief which may be requested and to which healthier choices is entitled give me money granting such further relief as the court deems appropriate uh give me more money than i ask for because you feel that it's good judge and then that's pretty much that and then the dude says seems pretty compelling that they might get judgment in their favor especially because of the law firm they hired yeah they hired some big dog law firm i'm not going to go into it right now um, but yeah, they hired some big dog law firm, uh, that is obviously patent specialist, and hopefully that works out for HCMC, especially since I have 1.2 million shares. Um, let me just take a look down real quick. So let me go back. All right. So that's enough HCMC for now. Let me go ahead and get two of these joints open. I'll leave that one on my, actually, I'll leave this one on my watch list and I'll leave this on positions okay let's go to amc because that's what's in the title all right so amc is having a little bit of a fade right now looks like it went up to the 1336 area and then faded down we've got a double rejection for support at 1320 and hopefully we can stay up stay up Ooh, I'm looking at some op looking at some opportunity to draw more triangles, uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. We got plenty as it sits. So let's stay and watch that. Let's look at the MACD going down. Uh, looks like a little bit of a turn at 50. Up, oh, no, don't go down as soon as I say it. So it's at fair value right now, and we want that baby to go back up. But the volume is, uh, I mean that's only half a minute, but. It's, oh, it's going up, going up at a decent rate, actually, for a minute. This is what we want, though. We want this over and over and over, over and over and over, just up and up and up. And we are seeing that we are now in an upward channel. Um, it's only about 30 minutes old or so, about an hour old. Um, but let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. What's going on with GameStop? GameStop, a little bit of a fade, but... Uh, we're under VWAP. We want to go over VWAP. We want to get over this supported trend line, and we want to get over this 200. And we want to get over. We want to get over everything. We are under everything right now. We're we're over the 200, but we don't want to go under it. That's what I meant to say. So we're over the 200, but we're under our nine-day our VWAP and our um, its resistance right now. Our resistance trend line. I can draw some other resistance, but I, I want to neaten these up a little bit. I would draw so many lines. They do end up being valuable, but it just messes up your charts. Uh, it doesn't look as good. 
So what's going on over here? I'm seeing a lot of uh, not loading. Let's look at Bitcoin real quick. Uh, I don't have anybody asking any questions, so I guess I'll just do what I would normally do, and then I would be checking Bitcoin right now. Uh, they are correlated, Bitcoin and the stock market. Um, take that for what it's worth. Um, here's the Dow Jones. See now, when the Dow Jones uh, has like, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a fade here, a little bit of a, you know, corrections here and there, but I don't like that. That's too, that's too parabolic. It looks like this, and then what happens? And then what happens? Let's see. Let's find some more examples. Boom, boom, boom. And then what happens? Oh, here's a bigger one. Oh, and this one was even worse. So, boom, 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 boom. And then a fall. I like our rises to be nice, slow, and steady with pullbacks along the way. This actually isn't too bad compared to this. This is all green on the way up, so it was all red on the way down. So this had some, you know, some, some healthy corrections on the way up. Bounced off of the 200, which is nice. Are we above or below the 9? So let's see. Um, we're below the 9, but the bar is on it, so we can get back there. I don't like that hammer. Um, this is that's a nice looking that's a nice looking set of bars right there. All right, so we'll see what happens with Bitcoin. Um, is there anything I want to look at? Sensionix. Uh, that was another one I got into. I got into that before Trey was talking about it, so I'm not going to give him credit on that one. Um, God, I don't even know what I had. I think I bought and sold that when it was like, pen like it was 50, 60, 70 cents. I mean, this was months ago. I might even have some. I mean, what are these from? Oops. Let me just, whatever I did, let me just lock that in just in case. So... Uh, let me go on a day just so I can find this. Uh, it looks like the stream is getting a little choppy, so I apologize if that chop is happening. Um, sometimes our stream health goes down. Just what it is. Okay. Oops. Yeah. No, it's fine. Let me back this up a little bit. And... Sensionics. Yeah, like there. That's where I was... So, yeah, I bought and sold, I want to say November to December area, like around here, long before. And, oh, you know what? I got some over here, actually. So, I think I was in and out in this area, probably in around there, out around there. Nothing really great. Um, and then didn't, gosh, all right, let me just lock that in. Uh, and then, look at that. So... You know, I could find them. Sometimes my timing is just wrong, though. Uh, I was watching The Big Short, and I remember it was Michael Burry or somebody. Who was it? Was it Michael Burry? Yeah, Michael Burry had told his boss, uh, the you know, whoever owned the hedge fund or whatever, that um, that he was too early. And then the guys, um, he's like, I'm not wrong. I'm just too early. And then the guy's uh, second guy in charge was just, basically said it's the same thing which is kind of true because if you're paying out you know if you you go into something too early and then forget about it then that's great but if you're going into something too early and then you're constantly monitoring it there's way more of a chance that you're going to dump out because of fear or whatever it is um so it looks like i drew that to there and then it kept going and then it stopped at this golden pocket it looks like i went both ways with it and then stopped at this golden pocket, came back, and now it's right in this golden pocket. I have very little shares, and it's very cheap of a stock, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that right now. So the SPX, the S and P index, but that's not the spy. Why do I have the SPX and not there's the spy? So the spy is down. It says one point, hmm, one point seven eight. Oh, that's that's the dollars. So point four five percent, but I mean that looks. That looks up as hell to me. I mean, this looks like March 23rd. Oh, this is March 23rd. That's hysterical. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it looks like that because watch. 23rd right there. Everyone, if you don't remember March 23rd, you're not a trader. Um, yeah, so that that was the literal bottom. And then it just V'd its way up and it's, it's riding the 200 still. This is a good indicator. Once you see it go below here, um, yeah. 
everyone's saying crash, crash, crash. You see the S&P go below there? Then um, it's probably starting. Let's see. You see the Dow go below here? It's probably starting, unless it's one of these, just to scare you out. Um, all right. So uh, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody want to talk? Any questions at all? I'm even going to type it. Any questions? Oops, I misspelled questions. Excellent. Any questions at all? Leave right here. Thanks for watching. I got to be honest. Um, I know you got to grind at this, but I hate being brand new. I, I like jumping into things and just killing them. And I just don't feel like I'm killing it as a YouTuber and, um, you know, not getting subscribers quicker um, is something I, I, I just look into how to, how to be better at that. Maybe it's my keywords and my SEO, but I just want some people to talk to. Um, they don't even have to subscribe. Just show up and ask me some questions. I'd like to spread some knowledge. So this is the day. Nobody wants to look at that. We want our price action to be local. I thought those were blue for a second. Those were cool. Not the line. That is blue, but the, the bars. Um, so looks like, oh, look at that. We're riding VWAP. No, we're not. What is that? What is that actually? I don't know what that is. Is that my VWAP? No, it's not my VWAP. Where is my VWAP? Is it somewhere else? I am not sure. I am not sure. All right, so we are streaming for one hour and 22 minutes right now. Um, I'm most likely going to take a break just out of, um, I mean, I, 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 I know what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at my portfolio. Uh, it hasn't really moved much up a little bit. Um, my call options are dog crap right now, but hopefully they get to where they need to be. Hopefully we see some uh, bangs up in AMC. Uh, I didn't do any GameStop stuff. I'm focusing a lot more on AMC right now. I am going to hold my five shares on GameStop, but I'm pretty much going to leave it there as of this moment. Um, and I'm pretty much not going to trade many other stocks. Um, I'm pretty much going to try to just day trade a few quick money makers and then just keep collecting AMC seems to be the plan right now. Um, I was not about that before, but at this point, um, I've decided to go all in on the movement and uh, all in on diamond handing. So I had said previously, and I still say it, if you can't afford to do that, then no one should down you for doing that. And if you're going to down people for selling when they got to pay for their mortgage or for their child surgery or whatever it is, then you're a scumbag and you need to back off because that ain't got nothing to do with you. Now, the movement's there. We're all in it. We love it, but don't down other people for their financial decisions. It ain't none of your damn business. That's number one. Now, that being said, with the movement, please, please, please hold, that's what I want. And the reason that I had said be careful with the movement is because, you know, apes or not, and whatever you want to call the group of Wall Street people, uh, Wall Street bets, fine, that's great. My experience in life and I am in the mental health field, is that people don't do, uh, people do what's best for them and not what's best for the group. Um, that's usually how it works. Now, in this situation, magically, magically, and I'm assuming it's because of the promise of great wealth, people have held on to their shares, which I, I couldn't believe it. Like it was, I couldn't believe it so much that I bought more shares. I was like, all right, all right. Now, now I feel like we got something, but just remember at any moment, you know, I want to be positive. I want to be Trey about it. I want to be Andrew Mo money about it. Max Maher. I keep seeing on his thing. I haven't seen his individual video. The dude that kind of looks like he's from twilight. Um, yeah, like I haven't seen any of his videos, but he seems to be a big, big dog. Um, definitely seems like he knows what he's talking about. Um, I, but now I'm kind of getting back to where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for it too. Why not? Um, let's get rich. That's what I want. That's what the, that's what all the apes want. So let's get rich. Um, so like I said, I am no longer going to say, 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm never advocated for paper hands, but I did say that depending on your financial situation, if you cannot hold through the rough times, keep in mind that was when we were at what? Five? I mean, I know GameStop was at 40 when I was saying that. So whenever, whatever AMC was at when GameStop was at 40, that's when I was saying that. When we blasted off that first or second day, I remember Mo was on the channel talking to me and I had said, cause he said he put all of his money in and I said, bro, you need to pull a little bit of that out and make sure you have some cash on the side just in case we drop so you can average down. I mean, that's just smart investing. So diamond handing is great, but diamond handing while investing smart is even greater. Um, all right. So let's see. Do we have any questions at all? Any questions? Anybody that wants to talk about anything? Anybody? Anybody at all? Um, all right. So, oh, I almost uh, said another thing that Trey said, but I'm not going to do that because I said that I would not steal other people's stuff. I think I just watch him so much that you start thinking, you know, in that in that manner. So you just kind of want to use those terms, but... I don't want to be, I mean, I want to call out this one dude so bad, but I'm not going to do that because that's negative. Um, but he like is basically just emulating Trey and, um, I don't know. It's just irritates me. And I'm not talking about the dude that like is, is faking being him. I'm talking about just a dude that just acts like him. And it's like, bro, if you say George W again, I'm going to run through this screen and backhand the hell out of you. Get your own terms. Anyway, I don't want to be negative. I want to say completely positive. Uh, let's go back to the position section. There's really not much to report on right now. It is pretty slow and boring. We did up. This is what I was hoping we would do. Looks like we caught the 200, rode out of the falling wedge, and we are in an upward channel right now being held down by our VWAP. But if we can break this VWAP, uh, I would love to see that. I'd love to see us break this resistance and then ride it up, ride it up. Let's see what's going on with AMC. Is it doing something similar? A uh, little bit higher. Loving that came up as suspected, broke resistance, broke the 200, um, rode the nine up, broke down below the nine, came up to the 200 and then came back up through the nine, broke VWAP and is in a great position to keep going. I'm loving that. Now, I feel like my call options should be up a little bit, uh, but they're still dog crap. So I don't know what's happening with that. I kind of want to average them down, but to be 100% honest, I am not completely that well versed in options. These are literally the first options I've ever bought. I did do, you know, obviously I read about them at first and, you know, I don't like the ability for somebody to exercise on you if it ends up in the money, but if it's in the money enough to where it's way lower than where you bought it, then that is the risk that you take. Uh, but it's all about the premiums. So I dipped my hands in that because I don't want to talk about stuff that I don't do myself. Uh, we have a double top right here. Um, it's yeah, just a double top right now which um, not really loving that because we know it sometimes happens, but we do have a good amount of historical room to grow, at least locally. Uh, where were we at? Even uh, during the market day, we hit 1365. So let's just kind of make that as a little, I don't want to trend line it. Let me get this out of here. Let me make it a horizontal line and we want to break the daily high it ends up oh purple's kind of cool uh i'm gonna make it green though because that's where that's the money we want to break that and get that money so 1365 uh 1366 is what it says is the day range just to be 100 percent accurate 1366 on my coordinates i know it's coordinates i'm just i don't know i woke up early to had to do something for work and uh I came back. I was exhausted at work. The second I left, I was like, eh, rocking and rolling. Oh, what's happening? We just saw two consecutive. Uh, I saw it looked like two moves at once. Okay. So we're still going up on AMC. We're looking nice. Oh, I kind of want to draw. I kind of want to draw a trend line. I kind of do. Any questions? Anybody here? Any questions? Okay. Nothing. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, 
my beats are getting kind of weird in my ear. Let me just go ahead and move those around. All right. Um, I'm going to trend line that because it looks like it's got three touch points. So I want to keep it there so it looks neat. Is it three? Uh, kind of. Yeah. I think it is. Mm, almost. Because if I go too low, then I'm not at the edge. So it's almost three. Ooh, I want that perfect. Maybe with my magnet tool, I could do it. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. I can like, nah, I'll fake it. So it's really an almost. So it's two and then two almosts. But that is, I mean, that's an upward channel, my man. That is an upward channel. Um, so we'll see what happens from there. Okay, let's see. Streaming for an hour and a half right now. Upper channel on AMC. We are looking real nice. It is 12.10. Oh, normally this is our sell-off time. Let me just go ahead and turn real quick and grab some biscuits and gravy before they are frozen. Mm. This is good. I am starving, Marvin. All right. Um... I might take a break just because nobody's watching or asking me nothing. And there's only so long I can yap before I start losing my own mind. Um, let's see. So Dow Jones still up 0.3%. You know what? Let's not even bother. Let's just take a look at it all at once right here. So it looks like everybody's having a little bit of a turn. Um, Dow looks like it's coming down, whereas the S&P and the NASDAQ are coming up. Oh, most of the sectors are looking pretty red. Um, there's your top gainers right now. I kind of want to bring this down a little bit because I don't, really don't care about the heat map. I know a lot of people swear by them, but I, I don't care. Um, it just I don't I don't need that type of visualization. There's other visualizations I want, but I don't need that. Um, top gainers, top losers. Olo. I like that name. YOLO. I bet if something, there's got to be something that's YOLO, uh, that has YOLO as a ticker because that'll do good just on the name alone. It's weird. There's a psychology about that. If you have a cool ticker, your your company will do good at certain points just because your ticker's cool. I found that to be very strange uh, that people invested that way, but everybody has their own vibe and is doing their own thing and it ain't me to tell them whether that is correct or not. Uh, let's see. Ooh, plug is getting wrecked and they should be do. Ooh, 16%. Mm, that's a buying opportunity. If you're into this company, um, energy, energy, I have, uh, the energy coin. I love that thing. I've been staking it. It does God. So let's take a look. Actually, let me see. I know there's like hackers out there, so I'm not going to show you my explorer for it just because i'm paranoid about that and i know people get took all the time and like i wouldn't know how to deal with that correctly i'd start trying a freaking exact revenge and pay freaking private detectives and all that but looks like it's at 250 per energy coin i started this thing with like 2500 coins i'm at 4074 coins right now at 215 a coin I mean, it has brought my cost basis of that coin down so much, and it makes two or three a day normally. Now, oh, this is internal transactions. Now, I was going to get a mat. I've, I've had a master node with them before. It was only a thousand to have a master node. I have 4,000 now, but I feel like staking gets you more. That's just my personal opinion. Their numbers don't, uh, <clears throat> don't say that. But if you stake and look at your numbers, um, then they say it there. So I have said, you know, in their discords, I'm like, your numbers are off. But, you know, whatever. They don't care one way or the other. They're, um, they're, they got way other, way more concerns. All right. So pretty boring right now. Um, let me take a look at my watch list. I'm just going to look at it on my phone. I'm not going to bother bringing it on screen. Um I've seen people just put their, um, I don't know. I'm still weird about having my like account number and everything like visible. It's like, can they find it? Oh, you know what? See, now you can see my account number here. I don't know how to hide it. 
Um, I guess I can do that. Um, but regardless, let me just go ahead and... All right, so by volume, my watch list has HCMC at the top, billions in volume, uh, Sundial, then Zometica, Ford after that, Neo, Blue Sphere. Oh, Blue Sphere's trading again? I was thinking about getting into that thing. Oh, no, it's not trading again. This. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. Hold on. Hold, 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 hold. Somebody was telling me about this. I never got into it, though. Blue Sphere, right? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, it's getting demolished, too. And I really... I'm a little weirded by the... Um, no. I'll nah, just... Whatever. I'll put them on both. All right, let's see what's going on with Blue Sphere. Um, barcode in the hell out. Hate that. So this is trading. I know it was stopped for a while. I mean, it's got volume on it. It's got to be trading. Low of 0 0.0065. High of 0 0.0084. Um, I remember looking into the company and thinking it was a good deal. Wow, you can't get nothing for them? So what, what's going on here? So I don't see any bids. I don't see anything. I don't see anything on my end either. I don't see anything on... Uh, let me pull these up on the actual Ameritrade. Yeah, yeah. Face ID this. Okay, watch list. Search. Um, maybe the level two will sell me something, say something about it. Blue Sphere. It says it's trading. We're at a, hor a historical low. Volatility is 352%. Uh, level two. Oh, they have options? I mean, where else can it go? It's two zeros over to the right. Something's wrong because it's saying loading and everything else is loading immediately. Um, hmm. Strange. Really strange. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I wonder if I get get my B right back message in the same area as my charts. So I'm gonna take a break because I'm not having a lot of uh, nobody's really talking here. I'm going an hour and forty minutes. There's really not much for me to say. Um, and yeah, I mean, I want to keep rocking and rolling, but there's only so much you can do with a live stream. Now, if I was doing a video on some due diligence, that's no problem. But live stream is really all about kind of having some sort of um, question answer type of situation going on. Um, besides that, I'm just kind of just yapping and yapping and yapping. Uh, that's why I'm hoping Mo sees this at some point and comes and says hello. Uh, this is looking nice. This is looking nice right here. Um, hopefully we can um, bounce off of the 200 again and then blast. That's what we're hoping for. Everything else is looking pretty healthy. Level 2 data not available. How about any data? Okay, so. I mean, this is trading again, but it doesn't, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with this. This is weird. All right. Well, I'm going to stay away from that because I've already gotten to a couple things that I 100% didn't know about, and that has not treated me well. So is Tesla on here? Nah, it doesn't matter. Let's just go over here. Let's split the screen. Let's get this out of the way. So we got games. No, I said out of the way. So we got GameStop and AMC. I wonder if, if actually instead of um, changing the screen, I could just throw my B right back on top. Just hold on one. Actually, you don't have to hold on. I'm just going to yap through it. Uh, let's see. Be right back with Night Rider lights. I, I've been trying to like put this stuff together, but it is not my cup of tea, like graphic arts and all that. Um. 
let's see, social media, be right back with Knight Rider lights. That seems kind of cool. Oh, that is cool. Okay. I don't even remember making this, but I guess I did. Uh, let's see. Slideshow set as. There was something. Oh, it's one of these, isn't it? Open with. How do I make it a tiny little thing? Oh, man. I, uh, I do not like graphic arts or editing or any of that stuff. Set as aptile. Okay, that didn't work. Set as lock screen. No, I don't want that. Slideshow, edit and create. No, none of that. Because it's not like a... I want it to be borderless. Hmm. Edit and create. Print. This is not working out for your man, Bobby Knight. Um... Add an album or video. Browse all your photos and videos. Oof, this is irritating. Let's see. Let's see. Oh! All right, nothing going on there. Um, I do not know how to do this. Rotate. Get creative with this photo. Edit, add. I just want it to be its own thing and not be in this crap. Why can't I do that? Oh, man. Just be your own thing. Resize, slideshow, share to, rotate, delete. Oh, lordy, lordy. All right, let me exit out of that. Let me try to open it differently. Like I said, if you are here, um, please go ahead and ask us some questions. I am down to talk about it. Uh, besides that, I'm going to probably be running this for a while. And whatever you question, ever, any questions you have, we are more than willing to answer for you. Looks like I am missing a call as we speak, and I am fine with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know your number, so call somebody else. Oh, what happened there? Okay. So we are still trying to get this thing to work. Details, printed versions, general. I really like it, too. It's nice. I just want it to be its own little box. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's just open it. Ah, <sighs> let's just open it. I remember, you know what? There was, here, here's my BRB screen. So I was able to do it with this. Oh, is that how I did it? No. Wait. Play in mini view. That's what I want. Okay. So let me get that, make this big, but I don't have the option. Maybe it's because it's not a video. Huh, okay. I don't see mini view anywhere on this one. Settings, add a folder, da 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 da. Okay. A single photo, all right, nothing there, okay, all right, well that gave me no answers at all, but that's fine, let's see, has anybody joined the chat, no questions, up. Oh. And that's funny. We like lost a person as soon as I said that. <laughs> that's okay. Um, all right. GameStop is showing strength. It is coming back. It is fighting this trend line. It is fighting it hard and it is staying above support. Unfortunately, AMC is not fighting as hard and is sitting between the VWAP and the 200 EMA. Um, but they are still both in upward channels, which I like a lot. 
and I do see an opportunity to draw a trend line. And if I see the opportunity to draw a trend line, I will draw a trend line. I love trend lines. So let's keep that right there. Looks like we got a triangle deal happening right there. Let's go ahead and do that. Give us something to break. Right over there. All right. Let me get a little closer and see and make sure that it's um, accurate. All right. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and for the heck of it. Looks like a nice midline right there. All right. So that'll give us something. I mean, it's decision time now. So you're going to come down and drop or you're going to go back up. We are supported on our 200 and we're above our VWAP as well. So we're looking pretty good on both. We are looking pretty good on both. So I'm loving that. Any questions, please go ahead. Do not refrain from putting them into the chat. We will go over it. I don't care what the question is. You can ask about any stock, any part of due diligence that you want to be done. You can ask me what I'm eating right now, what I ate yesterday, how my relationship is going with my girlfriend, anything at all. Please do not be afraid to ask. Um, I am here to answer and entertain. Not a financial advisor, not financial advice, but someone to talk to while I share my screen. Now, if I do get to a certain subscriber account, then maybe I will consider buying a nice camera um, to film myself. But until then, just because I like to work um, and I don't know if I'm going to end up offending somebody down the line, I will go ahead and uh, keep myself off of the view. Plus, you'd rather see the charts and the numbers anyway. I really don't understand how I don't I don't understand why people are so into watching somebody looking at their computer screen. That that I don't really understand. But there's literal um, science behind uh, people liking that better for some reason. I, I don't know why. Um, but you know, you do you. That's all good. Not a problem. Um, I think that I might give up trying to make this look like anything else than what it is. Um, what if I edit it? Let's see what happens. Um, nope, nothing I could do there because it's a GIF. Okay. Go back to there. Get that. So I want to kind of do Tesla's autopilot lands. I don't know who that is. Tesla's autopilot lands in the spotlight again. I hope it's for positive reasons. Oh, let's see. Who did I miss a call from? Another, another junk call. Yep. As usual. Um, let's see. There has to be a better way to do this than just that, right? Is that just the best way I can do it? I mean, I can put it in, but then it takes over my whole screen. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see if there's a good way. Let's see. Be right back. So I think that takes the whole thing. I don't want to take the whole thing, though. I only want it to, I wonder, mm, it's locked. Let me unlock it. I'm going to do this live. What's the difference? No, it's not. What's behind it? Oh, so, oh, that's, that's not good. All right, so I've moved the wrong box. So now I'm going to go to the Be Right Back box. I'm going to view it. I'm going to move this all the way out there again. Oh, no. Okay. There we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Okay, so there it is. Um, I'm even going to move it further. Right there. All right. 
So I believe that's what we're seeing. Let's pull this a little bit. There it is. All right. So now, now that I have that working, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that up for now. If anybody comes in at any point, um, I do have the charts up. You can take a look at them at any time. And I might even open up my watch list so you can take a look at that as well and see some of the main things that are going on. Um, let's just get this down to give you more things to look at. So here's some major stocks. These are stocks that are everywhere that everybody's talking about. Breaking news. Let's see what this breaking news is. Our signal performance speaks for itself again. 59% game. Oh, on AMC? Come on, man. You're going to take credit for an AMC signal? Get out of here. Get out of here. Stock alerts. Now, this this app, um, listen, if you do, what's the name of it? Stock alerter? Yeah, so they keep you offering a 50% discount. Listen, if you own the app Stock Alerter, you need to give me that for free, and then I'll talk about it. Outside of that, um, I'm not paying you $200 a month to tell me to give me some alerts. Uh, yeah, I could figure that stuff out myself, and so can everybody else, and there's free alerts everywhere. Maybe your alerts are good, but I, I saw some of their alerts, and they're like, buy it 10, sell it 10.30. It's like, yeah, thanks. Um, that's normal market movements. Anybody with eyes can figure that out. Um, not to talk crap on them. They do have some good stuff, but $200 a month? Yeah. You can throw me that for free and then I'll use it outside of that. I'll just, I'll just not, um, I'll hold on to it because they do give you one free alert. So there's a few things and they, they are on top of it. So you get to that, like the second it happens. So I do use it even though I have other alerter apps, but, um, $200 a month is just absolutely insane. You have to be giving me like trade ideas plus stock rover plus finviz plus adam plus like tip ranks all in one for that to be okay oh so amc taking a bit of a dump at about 12 30 um probably you know usually it would happen around 12 but that's okay taking a bit of a dump right now but GameStop going the opposite direction, almost a divergence going on, and these are completely opposite-ish, opposite-ish. I mean, we are overbought on GameStop and oversold on AMC. Um, I'm hoping the camps are, you know, not splitting up, but, and like I said, I am in both camps, uh, but I am focusing more on AMC. I think there's a lot more potential, and I believe that sheerly on the fact that it's cheaper um it's a lot you know there's a lot more possibility for me to to, to make more money on it now um that being said if i was a multi multi-millionaire then i would go heavy 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 into gamestop as well instead of just having my few shares um but once you start talking you know a few months ago tesla prices because i do have some tesla but that's tesla so i'm gonna pay for that um uh, yeah, I mean, but even, you know, at this price, like I'll snatch a little bit up, but it's just, you know, it'll overextend me and I don't want to be overextended and there's way too much room. Um, I'm just more comfortable buying at this, uh, than at this. I get way more of these for these. So currently just for the hell of it, we're going to go ahead and do the math. I know that this thing over here, where is it? I know that you know, this thing over here says that uh, I'm going to be right back, but I'm still here. I just want to see right now if you divided um, the cost of a GameStop share, which is 223.40 divided by 13.16, which is your AMC. That's That's almost 17 AMC shares. So, I mean, it really depends. There, there, there is a lot of opportunity in both. Personally, I'm just going to be buying more AMC. That being said, I'm still keeping my GameStop, and I'll probably grab some on the dips, but I'm just focusing more heavily on AMC. Now, does anybody have any questions before I take a quick break? Um, I am going to take a quick break, 
and it might even be a little bit just because um, we're rolling at almost two hours now. I've had one person ask me a question. Um, you know, I know that, like I said, it's early on in this YouTube career, but I just don't want to sit around for multiple hours just yapping to myself. Um, what I would do actually is maybe stop the live stream and then go make a due diligence video because at least I don't have to worry about people asking stuff um, for that to go on. So that's possibly what I'll do. Anyway, if you have come and watched, you know, I truly appreciate it. If you could throw a like on the video, that would be nice. Um, that would be great. I would love and, and subscribe too. If you're not subscribed, um, that'd be great as well. I think I'm at what 17. So that's a huge milestone for me. Um, but yeah, outside of that, any questions, please leave them in the chat. I truly appreciate you watching. If you're watching for now, I am going to leave my screen up just the way that it is. Uh, any questions at all, leave them in the chat and I will be back. Um, thanks so much. Talk to you soon.
We've taken note of the issues that have occurred um, at Robin Hood and in general. Madam Chair, I may submit some additional questions for the record. I want to thank the panel for their participation and I yield back. Thank you. The gentlewoman from Iowa, Ms. Axney, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman, and thank you, witnesses, for being here today. Uh, my husband and I have a digital design firm, so one of the areas that I've been focused on in regard to this is uh, some of the newer brokers having designed their platforms and how they've done that. Uh, Dr. Bogan, you've done some tremendous research in behavioral finance. Just a real quick question to start. Can app design influence what decisions people using that app make? Thank you for the question. Absolutely. Uh, app design and the way the platform is designed and the user interface can influence the type of decision that a retail investor makes um, almost on an unconscious level. And so I want to make a clear point. Um, there is a difference between, you know, retail investor access, which is great and provided by the apps, retail investor environment, which kind of is ease of use and retail investor manipulation in that there are certain behavioral science techniques that are used to trigger investors to behave in a particular way that may not be in their best interest. Well, and, and so that's why Robin Hood has uh, behavioral researchers, correct? Well, I can't speak to why they have behavioral researchers, but I can say that some of the features of their platform behaviors like more trading. For example, um, they have a list of kind of the most popularly traded stocks. Um, that brings attention to particular types of stocks. And we know from the research that just having attention to particular stocks increases trading in those stocks, whether or not it's in the best interest of the re, uh, investor to do so. So as you mentioned there, just it increases trading. Um, and do you think that that encourages savings and investment or do you think that that just encourages a greater tendency towards more, more trades? Yeah, so there's a difference between investment and trading. And so just trading multiple times a day for trading's sake, the research is very clear that that is never in the best interest of a, a, a household. Buy and hold is the conventional wisdom. And so buying is fine, but this multiple trading and churning portfolios has never been shown to be beneficial to a retail investor. Well, I appreciate that. I'm especially concerned about this, given the fact that Robin Hood's incentives are so heavily weighted on making sure that their users trade more because that's what puts money in their pocket. Uh, Mr. Arnook, Robin Hood has said that if it's uh, payment from market makers like Citadel is based on a percentage of bid ask spread. Can you explain why that's different from other firms and how that incentivizes Robin Hood to have their users trade wider stocks or even riskier products like options? Thank you for the question. I really appreciate it. Uh, first thing we should notice is that 92% uh, of Robinhood 
users' trades are outside of the S&P 500, which, which is to say that they're in stocks where the spreads are five times as wide as they are for the S&P 500. These are widespread stocks. At some point uh, in late 2019, Robinhood understood this and renegotiated the way they collect payment for order flow from the other market makers. It's always been a fixed mill per share. In other words, 15 mills per share uh, or 20 mills per share. That's how it's always been done. But presumably because Robinhood noticed the trading patterns of its users, they negotiated to instead receive a percentage of the spread. So this is an amazing, amazing misalignment of, of, uh, of, of interest. The Robinhood trader wants the stocks they trade to have the smallest spread as possible. The market maker who's buying the orders wants the spreads to be as wide as possible. And Robinhood, their agent, the broker, wants their spreads to be as wide as possible. I think that's fantastic in a negative way. So Massachusetts found that 68% of Robinhood's options approved users in the state had yeah, limited Robin or Hood, no user are, experience. Uh, when uh, you talk about this, uh, uh, sp you know, this, say this, the I'm options and the, the risk of the, the spread the there, trade all day. what do you think is going to be the outcome for 99% of these users who don't have the experience in getting into this type of market? It's going to be unfavorable. And in the end, if you look at the average account size across different retail trading platforms, you know, the average account size at, you know, E-Trade may be 250,000, at TD Ameritrade, it's 150,000 or 110,000, and Robinhood, it's 5,000. And they are outsized trading options. And while spreads in stocks are wide, <laughs> yield back. Thank you so much. Thank you. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Zeldin, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you to the witnesses for being here, to Chairwoman Waters and Ranking Member McHenry for holding uh, today's hearing. I represent the 1st Congressional District of New York, uh, which encompasses much of Suffolk County on Long Island. My home district is full of people from all walks of life and industries, and, and having access to cost-efficient investing is crucial. Uh, Mr. Pivovar, a lot of my constituents were concerned with the inability to buy certain stocks when some broker dealers placed limits on trading those stocks. And the main reason why this happened is because many broker dealers had to post additional collateral to comply with capital requirements at clearinghouses. You have written about shortening the trade settlement period to both increase efficiency and lower the cost of investing. Can you speak a little bit more to how using technology to shorten the trade settlement period could benefit retail investors and limit the potential for broker dealers to have to impose restrictions on certain trades? Thank you, Congressman, for that question. Yes, the, the shorter the trade settlement cycle, a um, couple things. One, uh, investors get uh, access to their cash sooner or their securities. Um, and two, the less margin that uh, brokers uh, have to post at the DTCC um, in order to, um, to guard against uh, failures to deliver. And so it takes a number of risks out of the system. As I mentioned, counterparty risk, market risk, credit risk, um, and liquidity risk, uh, as well as systemic risk of ca cascading list of failures. So shortening the settlement cycle, um, we provide those benefits. Um, again, going to real time, uh, it, it possibly increases um, uh, operational risk to make sure everything works correctly. So what you got to do, what we need to do is find the right balance. Thank you. It, it is also important that the data privacy for these investors is protected against any potential vulnerabilities. In the first hearing in this series back in February, I asked Ms. Schulp from the Cato Institute whether we should be concerned with companies with ties to the CCP investing in broker dealers operating in the US. She responded that it is a potential national security concern and that the rules that the broker dealers have to comply with regarding user data should be applied equally to broker dealers, no matter whether the parent company is a US or a foreign company. I've been concerned for some time in general with the sharing of US individual user data with the Chinese Communist Party. I sent a letter, for example, to the Treasury Department in October 2019, expressing concern with the potential sharing of US user information by TikTok to its parent company, ByteDance, and asked for a CFIUS review. Additionally, yesterday, I urged Treasury and Commerce 
to take immediate regulatory action against companies with ties to the CCP that have the capability to acquire Americans' biodata, specifically by sending letters to Treasury Secretary Yellen, urging her to direct CFIUS to reassess the Chinese company BGI's acquisition of complete genomics, and to Acting Secretary of Commerce Wynne Coggins, urging her to place all of BGI's subsidiaries on the department's entity list. Chinese companies are required by law to regulate online behavior that deviates from the political goals of the CCP, obey the CCP's uh, censorship directives, and participate in China's espionage. These policies regulate companies like TikTok and the China market, and increasingly their overseas business. I remain concerned that broker-dealer trading apps that are subsidiaries of Chinese companies with ties to the CCP like Webull, which has significant investment from Xiaomi, have not received enough regulatory scrutiny and can pose data privacy concerns for U.S. retail investors. Uh, Mr. Pivovar, I think these issues are uh, particularly timely to discuss in light of the upcoming U.S.-China meeting in Alaska. Uh, this isn't the first time Chinese investors have tried to buy into our capital markets. You were an SEC commissioner in, in uh, 2018 when the commission rejected the proposed acquisition of the Chicago Stock Exchange by a Chinese-led group of investors. Can you speak a little to the concerns the SEC had at that time? Uh, yes, thank you, Congressman. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, there was a Chinese-led investor group that wanted to buy uh, the Chicago Stock Exchange. Uh, it had passed CFIUS review uh, and it came to the commission. And um, under our statute, there are certain uh, prohibitions and limitations in terms of um, ownership uh, of, of the exchanges to, to make sure that we're protecting investors and that they're up they're fulfilling all of their obligations. All we did was simply ask questions about who the investors were, who their investors were, and very quickly, some of those investors fell away. And, and in other cases, they were not provide, able to provide us with answers uh, that made us comfortable um, that they would in fact be able to um, fulfill their duties under the federal securities law. So that, that was the basis for us rejecting that out. Thank you, I yield back. Thank you, the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kasten is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and to all our witnesses. I want to echo what uh, my friend, Mr. Hill said. This has really been an exceptional hearing. I've been learning a ton. Um, Mr. Arnick, you made a comment in your opening remarks that, I, that, that was really struck me, and I want to make sure I understood this right. The, if I scribbled it down right, you said, spreads become narrower when Robin Hood's servers go down. That is a heck of a statement that's causal. Can you can you just comment on, can you explain that in a little bit more detail and whether, to the degree you have any com confidence in whether that's a correla correlation or, or causality? Thank you for the question, Congressman. When, when Robinhood went, uh, would have a technology outage, those retail orders um, would not go to off exchange venues and would come to come back to the exchanges. And when they were, those orders came to the exchanges, uh, not surprisingly, more order flow migrating to the exchanges would narrow spreads. So first of all, that meant that the retail investors who are trading through any other app are getting narrower spreads and, and better price improvement and, and, an, and an improved experience and less costs. But it also means that the rest of the market the institutions, the pension funds, the mutual funds that really represent 90% of the long-term investors, they're able to interact with that order flow on the exchanges. And that order flow, for the same reasons that the, the uh, market makers want to monopolize it just for themselves, when, it is, when it's participating in a diverse environment on a public sunlit exchange, the best outcome accrues to everybody with those narrower spreads and less toxicity on the exchange. That's, that's really remarkable. I, you know, as I'm sure you saw um, last month when um, Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev testified before us, he said that, that Robinhood customers received more than $1 billion in price improvement in the first half of 2020. Um, can you just tell us briefly, is, is price improvement a proxy for best execution? No, not at all. Uh, thank, thank you again. Price improvement um, is an arbitrary calculation. It's based on a construct that we created, the national best bid and offer. So it does not include odd lots. 50% of the orders and trades on the exchanges are odd lots. 
and the NBBO does not include those. And they are and those odd lots are in between the spreads. It doesn't take into account hidden orders on the exchange. Exchanges have hidden midpoint orders. It doesn't take into account dark pool midpoint orders. So there's a whole mess of liquidity um, that, that demonstrate that the best available price is certainly not the NBBO. So to say that I price improve the NBBO by X, I don't care, 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion in aggregate, um, it just, it, it, it rings false. It's not the truth. Well, I, um, I, I want to then get to a more general question, and it's not just about Robinhood, but again, it's, that's why we're here. Um, as, as you mentioned in your, your exchange with, with Ms. Axney was, was really remarkable about the trajectory of Robinhood shifting from, from flat rates to a percent of the spread payments for their payment for order flow. But in, in his testimony, Mr. Tenov not only acknowledged that point, but said that in their options market, this may be true in equities as well, as well but he said in their options business, they categorically do not route trades to anyone with whom they do not have a payment for order flow agreement. So um, without speaking to Robinhood generally, if you are a brokerage that is earning your revenue as a percent of the spread, and you are only routing trades to people with whom you earn payment for order flow, is there any universe where that is consistent with actually fulfilling your best execution obligations? I believe absolutely not. They have no mechanisms to trade directly on any of, of the numerous venues that exist to trade. Dark pools, exchanges, these cost money. And apparently Robinhood is more interested in the revenue side of, of, their, uh, of their business model than actually in incurring cost that where they can fulfill their duties to seek best execution, the best prices everywhere. Mr. Kelleher, with 30 seconds left, is there anything you'd like to add to anything that Mr. Arnica said? No, he's exactly right. I mean, price, uh, it, frankly, the SEC should consider taking fraudulent action for people who claim price improvement off of NBBO because it's at best misleading, if not a fraudulent claim, and knowingly so. Thank you, and I yield back. <clears throat> Thank you. The gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Laudermilk, is now recognized for five minutes. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate uh, uh, all the witnesses being here. And I want to associate myself with Mr. Uh, Hill's comment earlier, which was uh, regarding the content and the discussion that we've been having in this, these, uh, these two hearings. I think it has been very informative. It's been very interesting uh, content. And I think this is uh, discussions that we should be having. Now, with that said, in the first hearing on this topic, I raised concerns about the fact that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle were using this situation with gang stock as an opportunity to push for more regulations, even before we had all the information in. Now, it's ironic because regulation is exactly what caused the trading with Robinhood in the first place. Um, as I mentioned that, uh, the chairwoman uh, responded and said that no one is calling for more regulations at that time. But um, I had already known at the time that that some had been asking for regulations. And obviously, we uh, live in a uh, political era to where a crisis can't go without using it to do something. And uh, as we know, Elizabeth Warren and others are using this issue to demand a laundry list of new regulations on options trading, payment for order flow, short selling, even a devastating financial transaction tax that would require the average person to work two and a half years longer before they can retire. Now, we all know in a free market system, which truly uh, investing is within that, that free market, especially when you bring in the, the average consumer, they know that there is a risk involved. The greater the, the potential uh, profit that you can make or the return, the greater the risk you're going to have. That's just a basis of, of, of the market and of any free market system. And so we have to be very cautious as we're going forward and trying to make a risk-free environment, but with high returns. It just doesn't work in, in that environment. In fact, I know of several people who have never been involved in the stock market but they took their stimulus money, several were working, they said, look, I don't need the stimulus money, but I know that eventually the government's gonna tax it back from me, so I will at least start making some money. I can't make any money by investing in a savings account because interest rates are so low, money markets are useless. So they've opened uh, these 
these uh, trading accounts, and they're actually using some of the stimulus money to invest, and they're concerned about some of what's going on. Now, these calls for more re regulation, I think, are ill-advised and premature for multiple reasons. And witnesses at the first he hearing said that markets are not broken, and the SEC chair uh, and the SEC commissioners have said that core market infrastructure has been resilient through all of this. What's more, the SEC is looking into these events and so far has not indicated that there was market manipulation. Adding more regulations would now be like a judge handing down a sentence before any charges are actually filed. So my question, Mr. Pivovar, can you describe how options trading, payment for order flow and short selling are already regulated by the SEC and other agencies? Yes, no, they're 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 highly regulated, right? So um, short selling, there's a number of requirements that um, I take them one at a time. Short selling, um, the SEC has done a number of things to um, to prohibit what's called abusive short selling, the illegal short selling, things like naked short selling, uh, not locating or buyer borrowing um, the securities before short selling. So regulation SHO, which was passed in 2004, and putting on um, not only the obligations to make sure you deliver those shares but actually um, putting on the penalties for those to the brokers themselves, not to the individual. So um, it, it was an interesting way they dealt with that. And so the number of fails to deliver went way down. Now, again, that was 17 years ago. If there was that a rule that the SEC should possibly revisit, absolutely, they should be doing that, right? Uh, options trading also is um, uh, a highly regulated by the SEC. There's a dedicated team within the Division of Trading and Markets that oversees just the options market. And the, um, the Division of Examinations and Enforcement team also have um, individuals um, that, that monitor uh, for noncompliance uh, in wrongdoing in those markets. Um, and I apologize, was there a third one that you asked about? Um, it was the short selling and order flow and options. Oh, payment for order flow. Yeah, no, payment for order flow, that's another one where um, the SEC has regulations on that. Um, there's, uh, we've talked extensively about the best execution obligations. Of course, they should revisit. Uh, whether they're working well in here. Of course, they should revisit um, the transparency of payment for order flow. Some of the witnesses have talked about the fact that uh, some of the measures of, of um, price improvement in the 605 statistics uh, are not perfect. Uh, rather than just throw them out and say, we can't use them, uh, I, I take a different approach. Why don't we make them more transparent, more useful for investors so that we can actually see how much price improvement is actually being given in the markets? Well, my time is up. I'll submit the other questions for the record and I yield back. Thank you very much. The gentlewoman from Massachusetts, Ms. Presley, is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for convening this hearing and all the witnesses for joining us here today. I represent the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District, um, and like all districts uh, across the country, is, is reeling from the economic impacts of this uh, pandemic. In Massachusetts, since February 2020, over 200,000 fewer people are employed. Children in 12% of households do not have enough food to eat, and many of the smallest businesses have permanently shuttered their doors. Research shows that following the 2008 recession, gambling and cheap lottery tickets increased among those who continued struggling financially. In this economic recovery, I'm concerned that Robinhood has positioned itself well to take advantage of this trend, but with much higher stakes for my lowest income constituents. Robinhood boasts that the platform is democratizing finance for the benefit of everyday Americans positioning itself as the great equalizer of capitalism. Meanwhile, it's running targeted advertisements on social media that say, and I quote, millions of people will soon begin receiving stimulus checks. As you consider whether to spend, pay down debt or save, we want you to be prepared. With the link back to their own blog, which says that, quote, never investing at all is a missed opportunity. Many of my constituents now just have a $1,400 stimulus, or what I call survival check, in their bank account to get them through months of expenses and are positioned to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in options training if they take that gamble. Ms. Goldstein, what do you make of these targeted advertisements under the guise of promoting financial literacy? Is Robinhood really increasing its own profits? by attracting new users after many existing users left the platform due to the trading halt in GameStop? 
Congresswoman, I have that. seen the same advertisements you are talking about. I, I keep getting them over and over again, in fact. And I do think that Robinhood, there was a survey that was done by Fortune in the wake of Robinhood freezing trading in GameStop and other meme stock names. And they found that some half of their users were considering leaving Robinhood for another brokerage in the wake of that. And so I absolutely think that Robinhood is looking to attract a new user base that hasn't previously perhaps participated in the financial markets to account for what I suspect is a large amount of users that they lost as a result of freezing trading in GameStop. And I should just flag that I disagree with the assessment that regulation is the reason that Robinhood froze trading or that you know the clearinghouse capital requirements is the reason. Most major brokerages have very serious dedicated teams that evaluate the risk and the capital that they need to put forward every day. And I suspect it may be Robin Hood's inability to manage its own risk and not any fault of any regulation. All right. Well, you know, look, providing an opportunity for people to make informed investments in part of their financial planning is not a bad thing. However, targeting the vulnerable Americans receiving federal relief during a pandemic certainly is. And this is not the solution to their hardship. Uh, Ms. Goldstein, Robinhood proposes that turning everyday Americans into day traders is democratizing finance, but you've written that the real solution to breaking the power of finance is to rebalance the recession-wrecked economy. What does democratizing the economy really look like? Congresswoman, I think it means that we need to rebalance our economy so that everybody isn't struggling or looking for the next gold rush scheme in order to pay their rent if they're facing eviction. I mean, I think you've been a real leader in this space, and so has the chairwoman, and so has Representative Adams and many others who have called on the president to cancel student debt through executive authority. I think there are a lot of different ways that we can tackle this problem. But I think one thing that we should think about, and you all as policymakers can think about, there's no way to save for retirement right now that doesn't give a cut to Wall Street. Unless you buy a savings bond or unless you are rich enough to purchase a municipal bond, we always have to give a cut to Wall Street if we want to save for our future. And 47% of Americans have no exposure whatsoever to the stock market. And so they're not going to be able to use Robinhood to try and, you know, make some wealth for themselves. And I think we need to come up with other solutions in order to figure out how we can build wealth. And there are a lot of potential solutions for that. The American Rescue Plan is a part of it, but I think we need to do much more and I thank you for your leadership on the resolution on canceling student debt. Thank you. Can I have tons of ideas. Canceling student debt, federal job guarantee, baby bonds, you know, uh, one thing's for sure, we need to be investing in people and in jobs, you know, um, and thinking about transformational bold policies and that's what I'll continue to push for uh, to close the wealth gap and to uh, create opportunities in our communities. So thank you for being here today. Thank you very much. The gentle lady yields back. The gentleman from West Virginia, Mr. Mooney, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. In the uh, aftermath of the market volatility in January, Acting Secretary of the SEC, Allison Heron Lee, released a statement saying that the SEC would act, would quote, act to protect retail investors when the facts demonstrate abusive or manipulative trading activity that has prohibited by federal security laws. So my question is for Mr. Pivovar, will you discuss the types of fraud that are currently prohibited and detail the breadth of securities laws that govern manipulation and false statements? Uh, thank you, Congressman, for that. I'm not sure I can address all of them in five minutes, but I'll maybe give you an overview of some of them, right? So. So um, one is, um, you know, in, in, you cannot trade on material non-public information in the breach of a fiduciary duty. So that would be insiders having information um, that, um, that they are using to disadvantage uh, retail investors. Uh, you cannot engage in manipulative trading activity and that can take the, 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 the place of doing, um, for example, the typical pump and dump schemes where uh, people uh, put out into the, in, into the marketplace and in, into the, in the internet, wherever, uh, false and misleading information that would give uh, paint a rosy picture of um, of a particular company trying to um, uh, increase the share price uh, after they've already bought the securities. So they they pump up the securities and then dump their shares at the high price and leaving retail investors uh, holding the bag afterwards. You cannot engage in other manipulative trading activity. Um, in 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 the case of you know very uh, high frequent trading, you cannot do you know spoofing and those sorts of things to give the appearance that you're providing liquidity and pull that away in order to induce traders um, to trade in those sorts of things. So there's um, all kinds of different um, 
uh, the sec uh, securities laws that protect investors. I will also note that the SEC's enforcement division has a specific um, uh, enforcement group dedicated to market abuses, and it's one of actually the most effective uh, and uh, most productive um, enforcement teams at the SEC in rooting out um, these abuses. Uh, you're on mute, Congressman. Sorry, quick follow-up, Mr. Pirovar. You indicated in your testimony that you have confidence the SEC is well equipped uh, to identify and act upon market manipulation as it relates to the GameStop case. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. For the reason I just, if one, they have the, the, the authority to do it, and two, they have an incredible enforcement staff, particularly the market abuse team uh, is very good at looking at these. Um, there's not only the, the enforcement staff in Washington, D.C., but also um, 10 different regional offices across the United States are, 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 are looking into this. All right. Well, I just want to say, you know, listening to the interviews from some on the left, you might not realize that the SEC already has the tools to go after market manipulation. Instead, you would hear accusations from like those from Senator Elizabeth Warren that our capital markets are rigged for the rich and powerful. If anything, GameStop case is an example of how lots of small retail investors can bet against a large hedge fund and win. It's not a rigged market, it's a free market. So when I hear some of the so-called solutions offered by my, my friends, my Democrat colleagues that they put forward, I'm reminded of the quote from the great Milton Friedman. Many people want the government to protect the consumer. A much more urgent problem is to protect the consumer from the government. So as we hear these proposals, from Democrats on these panels, I mean, I think we should ask ourselves, will this actually help retail investors? A couple questions like, would really restricting or banning payment for order flow help retail investors that benefit from no commission trading? Would a financial transaction tax benefit the retail investors that would be forced to pay it? The answer to both those questions is no. So instead of using January's market volatil volatility to advocate for new legislation, we should allow go to go to and protect yeah. investors from these attempted, you know, going to fail so-called solutions that will do more harm than good. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Torres, is now recognized for five minutes. Is Mr. Torres on the platform? Who is Mr. Torres on the platform? Alma. If not, we're going to move to Ms. Adams. The gentlewoman from North Carolina is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all of the witnesses as well. Uh, Mr. Blogman, uh, did the markets operate the way they were supposed to, or are there some fundamental vulnerabilities uh, that have been exposed? Uh, from the vantage point of the stock exchanges, where, if any, are the existing weaknesses within the system? Thank you very much for the question. I think uh, as the SEC reported and, and as uh, a number of, of the panelists have noted, the core market infrastructure operated you know, very well. Uh, it was very resilient, it was very available. From the exchange's perspective, our, our job is, is really to do four things. Ensure continuous price discovery, facilitate risk transfer, regulate our members' activity in the market according to exchange rules and securities laws, and then to ensure compliance of listed companies with their um, continued listing standard uh, obligations. All of those functions operated well. However, it certainly is the case that the retail investor experience was um, uneven across retail brokerages. And it's the case that uh, for a listed company like GameStop, uh, you're left with a, a lot of confusion about how a modern market structure could result in your stock um, having such volatility in such a short period of time. So I think when we look at you know, potential reforms for the marketplace, there are a couple um, 
you know, relatively low hanging fruits that, that we can focus on that would have significant benefit and um, reasonably you know, low impact in terms of unintended consequence. Okay, thank you, sir. Let me move on. Uh, Ms. Um, uh, Ms. Goldstein, uh, I'd like to bring up the problematic use of forced arbitration by both financial institutions and tech companies. Uh, Section 921 of Dodd-Frank gives the um, uh, SEC the authority to limit or restrict forced arbitration, which currently is overseen uh, by FINRA. Should uh, SEC use its authority under Dodd-Frank Act to examine whether it makes sense to curtail forced arbitration for gamified investment companies? Congresswoman Adams, thank you for the question. Absolutely, I do think the SEC should should uh, take a long overdue action to restore investor choice and make sure that you know we are prohibiting forced arbitration and prohibiting class action bans. You know, there's a lot of talk in the discourse right now about cancel culture, but I like to think about forced arbitration as cancel culture for companies who try to cancel the victims of crimes by silencing them and putting them in arbitration and not letting them speak their voice in a court of law and tell their truth. They don't have a right to appeal, and it's the secretive process that, in my opinion, tries to cancel their own customers. So I absolutely think that the SEC should could do whatever it can to restore investor choice and prohibit forced arbitration. Well, thank you, ma'am. You believe that the current arbitration process works or should uh, SEC step in, exercise its authority under the Dodd-Frank Act when it comes to fintechs in particular? Congresswoman, I think that arbitration can work for some people, but it is by no means a guarantee. And I don't think that companies should be forcing their customers into arbitration without having the choice of going to argue their case in a public court of law if they choose to do so. And so I think it should be up to the customer. And I don't think that companies should be forcing them into arbitration. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I yield back. Thank you. Uh, our chair is uh, voting now and has uh, asked me to take over and represent Mr. Uh, rec recognize Mr. Uh, Davidson of Ohio. I thank the uh, Mr. Sherman. I thank you, and I thank uh, our witnesses for uh, you know your your explanations. Uh, you know we're all uh, reading through your comments and you know drawing our own conclusions. I don't know if we'll have moved any closer to consensus, but. I hope that we'll look at some uh, important work done uh, about blockchain. So on the on the day of our first GameStop hearing, I sent a letter to the DTCC to request a status update on two of their internal projects, Project Ion and Project Whitney. These projects explore the potential future use of blockchain technology within our capital markets infrastructure. And last week, I received a response from them, and I'd just like to take a second to thank DTCC for their ongoing transparency with me and with my staff. And between their response and my letter, um, to my letter and their February 24th white paper, I'm optimistic that we will find a solution to improve upon our current uh, capital market infrastructure. I look forward to continuing our ongoing conversations with the issue and hope to expand that with colleagues. Um, when you talk about market structure, uh, Mr. Pivovar, you, you're clearly an expert on the cycle. And, you know, as we talk about the uh, clear feasibility of moving from T1 to T or from T2 to T1, even to T0, could you differentiate between, say, uh, T0 and, you know, same day settlement as an example versus real time and basically focus on netting? Why is that uh, something people focus on? And to, you could be the same day and do it real time or you could be same day and do it uh, in a netted effect. Could you explain that? Yeah, thank you, Congressman. Um, and I think uh, some people refer to that same day, but I'm allowing netting would be like T plus a half or something like that, as, as I think people are talking about it. Yeah, so uh, what happens is, you know, that you have multiple market participants bringing a number of transactions um, to, to the clearinghouse, and they could clear those on a gross basis, which means they have to clear every transaction that's there. And that would be hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, but what the clearinghouse uh, can do to, to improve the efficiency uh, of doing this um, is to net some of these trades. So, for example, if you and I are two market participants, um, maybe we're um, you know, algorithmic traders and we have two orders that are of the same size um, and you know, happen to be the same price, we could net those out and not even have to clear them. If we're all, I'm on one side and you're on the other. And there's ways to do partial netting in those things. And it, and it induces a lot of great um, 
uh, efficiencies to the system. Yeah, thank you for that. And I understand uh, some of those efficiencies, and it's uh, similar to like a sweep account. There's no benefit beyond you know the one day, uh, and in terms of intraday, uh, for a lot of things. But there there are times where it does make a difference. One of the key things is custody, and part of the challenge is how do you prevent multiple claims to the same shares? As Mr. Perlmutter highly, highlighted, clearly when you have that gap, you had you know people promising the same shares to multiple parties. And that's what you can clearly do with real time. Do you think you can get there if you settle for anything less than real time? Well, it's a couple of points there. One is um, we, we talked about the rehypothecation uh, situation in securities lending. And I think that's where I think there's consensus among the panel members here to getting greater transparency uh, into that market and look at whether there's any uh, regulatory actions that need to be to be taken there. Um, in terms of um, you know T plus a half or T plus one, this is where the SEC should put this out for comment. There's there, there's competing costs and benefits on both sides of this. Um, one issue that has not come up uh, in this hearing uh, that I've pointed out uh, in my Wall Street Journal op-ed and in other places is that it's not only the the SEC. Once you get the T one or 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 same day, the SEC can't do this alone. You also have to get the bank regulators involved because we need to make sure the cash gets there. And now you're bringing in uh, uh, bank regulated payment system, ECH. Add to that, what about foreign uh, currency transactions for cross border trade? That has to be settled. So, um, not something that is you, you can't overcome, but this is one where the SEC is going to have to coordinate with the bank regulators to make sure that all of these pieces fit together. Yeah, I, I thank you for that. And I will say that the blockchain coupled with a payment system smart contracts could settle all that uh, without an intermediary. And I think that, you know, at scale is the question, uh, and, and we may be a ways out from that. I, I wanna highlight just the SEC closing, uh, suspending trading for certain shares based off of um, essentially social media posts. Uh, so, you know, you, you talk about stocks that are not paid much attention to, uh, with the democratic access to capital that's happening because of FinTech, uh, because of technology broadly and because more people are looking at doing it, uh, essentially the SEC is saying, well, we are going to intervene and, and just because a stock gets more attention, we can suspend that. I think that's a dangerous thing for them to filter. Just because a stock starts getting attention, they're going to close off the market access. I wish I had time to explore this, but the ramifications for the SEC doing that uh, are, are really big. It, it essentially says they're going to impose a value range. And when you deviate from that, it's a problem. So thanks, and I yield. Now I yield five minutes to uh, uh, Ms. Talib of uh, Michigan. Thank you so much, Chairman, and thank you all so much for being here, um, Mr. Keller. I, I want to. Um, I know that earlier you had. testified about that that our marker mark Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Talib. Uh, so uh, why don't you proceed? All right. Thank you so much, Chairman. I apologize for that, Mr. Kehler. So one of the things that I, I would like to hear from you, if you agree, yes or no, 
do you think the current regulation of private equity meets your standard of quote transparent well regulated and policed yes or no absolutely not yeah is it true that private equity firms don't have to share data on their climate risks correct how about how they treat their workers and their portfolio companies uh, not that i'm aware of isn't it true they don't have to share data on whether they're promoting racial equity and diversity? Uh, they do not. They're private, ec private companies. The disclosure is almost uh, zero. That's right. And even though they, again, that's, they control more than like double the number of companies publicly traded on the U.S. I mean, it's double. It's 8,000 companies in the United States. So I thank you for that, Mr. Kaheller. Ms. Goldstein, would you agree that private equity firms use this lack of transparency to shield themselves from harm they do to our workers and our communities? Yes, Congresswoman, I agree. So Ms. Goldstein, we know that pension funds are some of the largest investors in private equity. That's where it impacts my residents, right? Many of my residents in my district are relying on their pensions to retire with human dignity. Aren't there retirements at a higher risk because we don't require private equity firms to make the same disclosures as publicly traded companies? Uh, Congresswoman, yes, I think that's a risk with private equity. I think it's also a risk with hedge funds who also lack many of this, the disclosure standards that other types of firms have to submit. So yes, I would agree with you. So I'm asking many of my colleagues, I think this is something that we can work together in a bipartisan way. Uh, and I'm really grateful for the committee to be focused on making public markets fairer and more transparent for retail investors. But we truly do owe it to our working people, our neighbors around the country, to hold private equity firms to the same standard, rather than allow them to continue looting businesses across the country. I thank you, uh, Chairman, and I yield. Thank you. I uh, now represent, uh, recognize Mr. Budd from North Carolina. Thank you, Chair. So this is the second committee hearing on this topic. And once again, I'm appalled by some of the comments I've heard from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. The notion that retail investors are, are even referring to them as dumb money, I think it's absolutely insulting. Just let's remember that retail investors are smart and they're a force to be reckoned with and they're revolutionizing the market in any legislative or regulatory changes to interfere with their ability to trade and have access, I think that would be an absolute tragedy. So, Commissioner Pivovar, do you believe that the SEC is well equipped uh, to make value judgments as to what constitutes a good or a bad game-like feature? And in your opinion, um, do you believe that gamification is actually uh, this grave uh, systemic danger that my friends on the other side of the aisle make it to sound like. Uh, thank you, Congressman, for that question. Um, in terms of, you know, the gamification that that Robinhood uh, is apparently using, I'm not a customer. I don't have the app, so I so I can't comment on that. Um, certainly, the SEC is well equipped to look at whether certain gamification features um, uh, violate um, existing standards under the law, and and they will prosecute uh, accordingly to, uh, to that. Uh, one point I will mention is that um, you know gamification uh, as a term, as as being used here very narrowly, is to point out that there there are there are types of games that are out there, simulations um, that are very valid ways for people to learn. In fact, business schools, MBA programs are abandoning uh, many of the traditional um, case method and uh, lecture type classes, and in 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 encouraging the students to learn through gamification simplification, cybersecurity. Um, classes are being taught through gamification. You can't teach it out of a textbook uh, and those sorts of things. So this is this part of our society that's going forward. Um, it's actually, you know, it's obviously something the SEC has to look at, but to paint a broad brush and to say the gamification is necessarily bad or a systemic issue, uh, I think would be, be too broad of a brush. So, you know, my opinion is this makes the SEC take their eye off, off the ball. Uh, do you think the SEC should instead focus on the traditional role of determining when investment advice has been provided by a brokerage? Yes, in fact, they're well equipped to do that. And they, in fact, just updated the regulations on that. Um, the SEC uh, just recently promulgated regulation best interest, which was uh, on the broker dealer side, what was the old suitability standard has now been enhanced to be called the, the regulation best interest, uh, making it very close to the, uh, if not higher than the fiduciary standard on the regulated 
uh, investor uh, side or in the, uh, in the investment advisor side. Um, and also the SEC doesn't do it alone. They also have FINRA, the self-regulatory organization um, that has its standards and polices uh, uh, those standards. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, you know, there's been a lot of attention given to the clearance and the settlement process. So in your former capa uh, capacity as acting chairman of the SEC, you led the effort to move officially from T3 to T2. So following up uh, on my friend and colleague from Ohio, um, I look at the blockchain and I see a potential avenue for innovation in this area. So is it possible for clearing houses in addition to real-time settlements on a blockchain to coexist while pursuing something like T1 or T0? Uh, yes, I mean, I think there's there's a couple ways we could do this, right? So when we moved from three to two, um, we put in the final rule that the SEC should continue to study and look at what the industry, um, uh, you know, enhancements were in terms of technologies uh, to facilitate moving to one uh, or real-time settlement. I think real-time is further off. Um, and the question is, do, do they want to put all their eggs in one basket and try to pursue real-time, which could take a long time? Or the SEC could, uh, could do a dual-track approach, which is, let's look at potentially moving to T1 in the short term, but also signal to the industry that in the long term, they're thinking about moving um, to um, same-day settlement to the extent that, um, that, that things like blockchain uh, evolve to that point. And again, uh, having to coordinate with the banking regulators to make sure that the cash actually gets there through the bank payment systems. They, their, their systems are outdated too. Thank you. So, you know, as technology evolves, um, we still want to have the position that we are the financial uh, envy of the world, the financial markets are the envy of the world. So what sort of regulatory requirements should the SEC update and review in order to remain and continue to grow in our strength? Thank you, Congressman. I think as a, as a, as a general matter, the SEC should be in the habit of, of periodically reviewing all the rules. I think in, to your point, in the markets in particular, because markets and technologies evolve so quickly, things like payment for order flow, things like transparency in that market, things like um, making the securities lending market more transparent um, are, are, are all fruitful areas for the SEC. And to your point, we are the envy of the world, but everybody's gunning for us. So we need to make sure that we maintain uh, our leadership. The time of the gentleman has expired. I now uh, recognize Mr. Torres from New York. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have concerns that payment for order flow perversely incentivizes the highest payment for the broker rather than the best execution for the customer. Uh, there's a reason we call it payment for order flow. No one calls it best execution for order flow. Um, my first question from Ms. Goldstein, should payment for order flow be permitted uh, Congressman, thank you for the question. I always refer back to the 2016 SEC memo where they asked this question. I think that's one approach we could take. We could just outright prohibit it. Another another thing the SEC could do would be to require the brokers to pass on the payments for order flows to their customers. And another approach could be uh, requiring that customers be able to opt out. Or um, I think there's a multiple approaches that they could take, but I do think that we do need to do something. Yes. So, so I, I'm concerned about the conflict of interest, but about a week ago, there was a hearing in the Senate. And according to a Duke University School of Law professor, Gina Fletcher, who testified at a Senate hearing, uh, the racial gap in retail investing has been cut in half in five years. And so here's what I'm struggling with. How do we address the conflict of interest? How do we ban the worst of payment for order flow without, without losing the gains that appear to have been made in market access? I mean, Congressman, I, I think it's a great question. I think we need to just ensure that the SEC can take all of the enforcement actions that it needs to take. I've been very enthusiastically listening to all of the uh, Republican members in particular, giving the SEC lots of work to do. And I would encourage those members to make sure that the SEC is adequately funded so it can pursue all of these investigations into whether or not best execution is being upheld by brokerages and whether or not there are any particular conflicts of interest. And so I would encourage them to make sure that there are the right investigations into whether or not best execution is being upheld by brokerages and whether or not there are any particular conflicts of interest. And so I would encourage them to make sure that there are the right appropriations. And I think we just need to make sure that the markets are fair. And that doesn't just mean funding our agencies, but that means looking into whether there are regulatory blind spots. And I personally think that there is a big regulatory blind spot in hedge funds and in private equity funds. For example, we don't know 
what what amount of stock hedge funds are shorting because the form PF that they have to disclose their positions on do not include shorts of stocks. And so I think we have a combination of we need to make sure we are enforcing the law and have the resources to do it, but also make sure that, you know, perhaps we need more legislation to address regulatory gaps. And then we won't have to choose between those two things that you outlined. And, and I certainly support greater transparency. Um, I have a question about brokers. The controversy surrounding the GameStop short squeeze arose from Robinhood's decision to restrict tra trading. Setting aside Robinhood for a moment, it seems to me that brokers in general have almost absolute power to restrict whatever retail trading it wants, whenever it wants. Should there be any legal limits on the ability of a broker to impose trading restrictions? Should we limit trading restrictions to conditions of market volatility? What are your thoughts on that? Congressman, I think it's a good question for the committee to consider. I do think brokerages need to make sure that they don't go belly up. And I do think that, you know, Robinhood in particular perhaps was facing a, a period where they perhaps they didn't manage their own internal risk sufficiently. Perhaps they didn't predict what their capital you know, requirements would need to be to the clearinghouse. And so I think that might have been a failure of their own business. But if the choice is between prohibiting trading in a stock that they might not be able to handle because uh, perhaps they haven't managed their business well, or you know, just going under. I, I can understand that you might want to take the less drastic approach. So I'm I want to interject because my time is running out. Um, suppose I have a question about market makers. Suppose there were a company named Goliath with a market making arm and a trading arm, and suppose the market making arm collects vast quantities of retail real time information about vast numbers of retail investments. Could the market making arm legally share that information with the trading arm? No. No, they need to have a firewall between if they have a prop trading desk and their market makers, there must be a firewall. That's great. Uh, that, that's the extent of my question. So thank you. Thank you very much. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Kustoff, is now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank the chairwoman and the ranking member for convening today's hearing. I'd also like to thank all the all the witnesses uh, this morning and this afternoon. Uh, Director Pirovar, if, if I could with you, I, I think one thing that or at least I would think everybody could agree on, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, is going back to GameStop to that day in late January, we don't want any investor or any trader being shut out, if you will, uh, not being able to, to make a trade to, to buy or to sell. When we had our hearing last month with uh, with about uh, his arguments about the settlement time, T plus two, T plus three. Uh, what I got out of it is he essentially thought that if it were uh, same day settlement or even T plus one, that uh, they may, have not, may not have been in the situation that they were in uh, having to deny people access to their app. My, my first question to you is, would you agree if, if it were if it were T plus one or same day settlement, would we have seen the scenario that we did in late January with GameStop? Uh, thank you, Congressman. Uh, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I do know that if we had, if there was a shorter trade settlement cycle, Robinhood's margin calls would have been a lot less. Now I don't know how much they would have been relative to their financial resources, but um, it would have been a lower likelihood. Um, certainly, and, and if I may, there, a point that um, that Ms. Goldstein is bringing up is that um, you know the situation was uneven across broker dealers here, right? So one of the things the SEC is looking at is to is is not only what it, you know across the industry whether the sort of the trade settlement cycle, but also whether or not um, uh, Robinhood's risk management policies uh, and compliance procedures uh, were actually adequate, and that's something that they're looking at in in here too. So I don't. You know, when I say we should look at shorting the trade settlement cycle, it's not because of the particular uh, performance of one broker. Uh, they happen to bring the issue up, and it's something that I felt very passionately about when I was at the commission and started a path on and, and continue to do that. But I don't think we should overlook um, the fact that we had um, different um, different impacts across different brokers. Thank you. I, I may have said CEO of, of GameStop. I did mean CEO of, of Robinhood, and I appreciate you you interpreting that and, and correcting that. You went through this exercise when you were with the, the SEC and, and helped to lead the effort to, to shorten the, the settlement time. 
can you take the other side of the argument, if you would, and, and what, what, why would people advocate against going from T plus two to T plus one? What are, what are the, the, the arguments against that? Sure. So, so one is cost, right? So um, the industry is going to have to incur some costs in order to need to do that. Um, now, what the SEC has to do is, benef is, is weigh those costs against the benefits from shortening the trade settlement cycle. Again, the benefits are you're lowering market liquidity, um, credit, and systemic risk in the system. Once you start approaching real time, you're actually increasing risk because everything has to work perfectly together at the same time. The, the cash has to get there. The securities have to get there. If you have foreign currency you know, settlement, that has to happen at the same time. And so the, the arguments are against are just based solely on a cost benefit framework. Now, four years ago, cost benefit analysis showed that T2 was the clear winner. Four years have passed. We've got changes in technology. We've got changes in markets. Um, it's time for them to reevaluate, and I wouldn't be surprised if T1 uh, were, were the clear choice, but maybe not, right? That's why I believe the SEC should at least go through the exercise. Um, and if you were to project, uh, let's assume that the, the SEC does make the decision to go to, uh, to T plus one, what's a realistic framework or, or time period? Uh, thank you, Congressman. Again, um, at the the SEC can't do this in isolation. Once you go down to one, they're going to now have to get the bank regulators involved because you have to make sure that the, the, the cash payment systems align with the security settlement system. And that then, you know, the SEC could put itself on a timeline, but you have to also, you know, get all the bank regulators. So that's why I was advocating that Secretary Yellen um, should start a work stream at the, at the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which is the coordinating body among all the regulators. And so using her power as chair of the of the FSOC, she can actually help shorten that time that 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 time period by getting the regulators to, to all row in the same direction. Thank you, sir. And I, I yield back. Dean is now recognized for five minutes. Is Ms. Dean on the platform? If not, we will move to Mr. Garcia. Okay. The gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Garcia is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Ranking Member for the discussion uh, today and of course all of our witnesses. Uh, last month's GameStop hearing revealed uh, a lot of different viewpoints about what happened, who's responsible, and what we can do uh, to, uh, we, can, we can do about it. As always, uh, there are a lot of technical details, but when people in my neighborhood think about finance, they aren't thinking about these details. They're thinking about losing their house as they did, as many did in 2008. Uh, they think about the stock market at record highs during this pandemic while unemployment soars. In short, they think about a game rigged against them. And if you ask me what happened to GameStop uh, earlier this year proves them right. Uh, so some questions for a couple of our witnesses. Mr. Kelleher, uh, people talk a lot about how retail trading is democratizing finance and helping the little guy. But from your testimony, it seems like the current system of retail trading does the opposite. It rewards huge firms that can handle lots of trades and it rewards high frequency trading. Do you think that payment for order flow model of retail trading actually entrenches big players? Uh, it does. And the fact that those big players have almost no disclosure obligations and very few regulations makes it even worse. I mean, one thing that hasn't been brought up that is a major problem, which is the citadels of the world are a big part of the shadow banking system. There's a lack of transparency. There's a lack of regulation. There's a lack of oversight. There's a lack of accountability. All of that enables secret wealth extraction by the big dogs in finance, all at the expense of the retail uh, investor and the retail trader. And that all needs to be looked at and changed. But the one thing we know for sure, and, and Sal talked about this earlier, the retail investor ends up getting time and time and time again, the worst deal. 
that doesn't mean we're not in favor of more retail investors. We'd love to see more retail investors. We just think it should be a level playing field. We think they should be treated fairly and they should, right now, they're discriminated against dramatically. They're in a terrible position and being picked off and they shouldn't be. So we're not against democratization. What we're for is level playing field, transparency, accountability, and fairness. And that will increase confidence and that will increase retail investors. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Uh, Ms. Goldstein, in your testimony, you mentioned that GameStop uh, incident revealed more than just volatile stock prices. You mentioned that the rise of retail trading. What's up, guys? I am back. And like currently Citadel we are watching the House the Committee on Financial, our financial Services system. talk what about do you think that the GameStop situation, do uh, discussing the volatility um, that we saw what if in um, the SEC or the brokerages system. are and being unfair to retail investors, to which we know they are. And uh, it looks like Jesus uh, is speaking. Question, I'm just joking. His name Garcia. is Jesus. I, think um, there I just used wanted to, be to say that because I thought it was funny. Um, uh, let's go ahead uh, and listen to them talk the a little bit more. And, uh, and then I'll be closing down the stream the pretty soon. I'd run it a little no bit longer, but um, you know, we, we don't have a lot going on here. The market's pretty flat right now. We're still waiting for Jerome Powell to speak. I'm going to go ahead and put my energy in a little bit into making a video that I could actually put out, which is in the live stream. Stream finally, it'll be my first regular video and not live stream. Um, and then I'll go ahead and get that, that posted as soon as possible, whether that's today that or tomorrow. Ago, uh, but there isn't a lot going on right now bank. as far as uh, people watching or any questions going on. Um, like I said, I know that we're new, it's going to take some time for that. But I I don't like to sit around and talk to myself for hours. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and watch this a little bit longer, then I'm going to go ahead and get on that video. and. Uh, maybe before that, I, I'll go ahead and check out some of the live streams um, of some of my favorite YouTubers sure like Trey's Trades. I don't know if he's uh, live streaming right now. Um, oh, it looks like we got Tesla has been fading off earlier highs, now sure down 1.8% we do after headlines, says traders. Um, but yeah, and like Andrew Mo Money, he's streaming the same thing that I am right now. And they have like 10, 12, 8, 10, 12,000 people watching. They got questions going on. So. I'm going to go ahead uh, in a little next, bit, close this down, um, we will have go Mr. ahead, get Rose, on, on those, and be where the action's at, um, and then I'll make another video, you, and then we will uh, talk again chair, soon. And, uh, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on mute uh, for now, and then comment and uh, as I see fit from what I'm listening to outside today. of that. Uh, if you have any questions or you end up coming onto the stream, just go ahead and leave your questions down there in the chat and we will address them. Uh, if not, um, I will talk to you the soon. The core of market regulation is transparency, providing investors information and giving them the opportunity to make informed choices. We should not be adding regulatory barriers to keep people from participating in our capital markets. Instead, we should be opening up our markets to everyday investors and providing them with the information and transparency to participate in an, in an informed way. Despite the intense volume and exposures presented in the markets, the broader infrastructure of our financial markets has performed well. My concern, like those of many of my colleagues, is that forging ahead with new regulations or ideas like the financial transaction tax at this point would be harmful and have unforeseen consequences. Dr. Pivovar, you highlight the importance of a comprehensive economic analysis as part of the rulemaking process as it allows us to evaluate trade-offs. I agree with you. Will you detail the implications of a knee-jerk reaction to the events that occurred in January? Uh, thank you, Congressman, for that question. Um, yeah, the SEC is well equipped to do economic analysis, and in fact, is 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 um, is required by law to do so. Uh, when it comes to market structure issues, um, as I said in my written testimony, there there are no solutions; there are only trade offs. And the reason for that is 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 multi dimensional. One is that our market structure is very complicated. Um, it's it's a consequence of um, you know dozens if not hundreds of decisions that have been made over the course of decades and so um, any change in one area 
will necessarily have likely effects in another area. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't go forward and make changes. What that means is that um, when, when we do think about making changes, uh, we need to think about what the likely effects are, what are the trade-offs, what are the costs, what are the benefits, the expected changes in behavior, weight all of those. Also, explicitly to look at alternatives to the possibility that's there, right? So for example, you know, payment for order flow, right? We could look at the existing situation. One alternative is to ban it and look at that. And, and Ms. Goldstein has brought up a couple of other um, sort of uh, in-between steps in there and explicitly look at all of those. And then based upon that analysis, you can do a reasoned, rational approach to come out with which which of these is is the best path forward. So, if we were to review and reform payment for order flow, Dr. Pivovar, what what reforms do you think the SEC could implement to increase transparency for retail investors? Uh, thank you, Congressman. I think, um, as, as, as I mentioned, there's these things called 605 reports, which is just a, a, a fancy SEC rule on that. And they give a little bit of information in terms of um, execution quality for retail investors. And, and the SEC has revised them over time. And, and some of my fellow witnesses have pointed out um, some of the, um, the the problems and holes in it. It doesn't, you know, the national best bidder offer doesn't necessarily. All right, guys. So we're having some technical difficulties right now. I'm that. not sure. And so I think that uh, what the SEC should do is not, or, to, or if uh, um, if we're looking at those 605 um, reports, we got, we got the, um, that, the, the that pinwheel like going on right now. Do, but uh, um, it is so telling me that I am having a poor stream status right now, and that YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain it smooth. Nobody's watching some choppy stuff. I'm going to go ahead and shut it shut her down. Uh, I'm going to go get on some of the live streams that are popping, like um, Andrew and Mo Money, we could do Trace Trades, to, to I think is popping right now. Let me, let me take a look. Uh, into the 606 look and reports and the, the 605 reports, do it right. so we can find out um, for particular customers at particular brokers that send their trades Even in particular iPad stocks to particular wholesalers, um, how well are they doing? I think that would help shed a lot of light. Trace Trades, we've got 10,000 people watching him. We've got Andrew Mo Money, he's got 7,000 people watching him. In a challenging global economy the strength of our I saw capital Matt markets is vital to long-term economic growth um, I gotta yet find regulatory burdens Matt and increasing Max amounts Mayer? of red tape prevent uh, the, small businesses the from dude, thriving um, and stifles like American Jesus, innovation uh, or the advances Jesus. we have seen to, over the last uh, decade in technology have improved the way Americans and our businesses perform financial well. activities um, but Due to they're streaming right now I'm gonna go jump on those see what's going on those and try to maybe get into those conversations I hope you all have a good day I'm gonna make a video soon and uh Thank you. hopefully we the will talk again Pens sooner oh, than later from uh, this Ms. is bobby knight the night trader i hope you all have an amazing day minutes. and i hope you make a ton of money Thank you, um I thank all please of our come back uh next time we are streaming please come back uh to any videos issues. we put out uh, uh and when we are streaming i am to, down uh, to answer any questions i am down to do any due diligence live do any charting live for you whether it be crypto whether it be stocks i love them both um you know and i love doing this and i just want to get it to the point where we can get some other people that i can bounce back and off of or back back off of because that's just that's what i enjoy doing most is conversing and talking and you know that's just about it um i hope you have a great day and i will talk to you soon night trader is we're unwilling to express what he was apologizing for ms goldstein uh, I've had the chance, my office has had the chance to discuss with you servicing failures uh, in other industries. What failures, and I'm a former professor of English, I just want plain English here. What servicing failures or failures or mistakes by Robin Hood uh, on January 28th would you observe? Congresswoman, thank you for the question. I think that they...